Good morning. Uh, welcome to the uh, Monday, March 24th, 9 a.m. meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, Santa Rosa County. Please take a moment to silence your uh, telephones, make sure they're in vibrate so that we don't interrupt each other. And uh, let's rise for uh, opening prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together as free men and women to decide our own governmental affairs. Pray that you'll watch over and protect this body. I pray that the things that are said and done here be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, I believe Commissioner Cole, it's your turn with the pledge. Join me as we pledge allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we'll start on the right. Uh, Commissioner Salter, do you have any additions? Mr. Chairman, uh, no items other than we continue to move forward, and hopefully around August to September we'll be finished with the Guff Power Company industrial certification sites. Outstanding. I attended an excellent conference the other day on that very subject. Commissioner uh, Cole? No add-ons, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lynchard? No changes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Walker? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We, we need to add the uh, acceptance of the assignment of the Gulf Power uh, Company uh, lighting for, I believe, the final stage of the uh, US-98 lighting. We, we accept maintenance of that, and then, and then we're uh, reimburse that through a separate contract with DOT. Okay. Let's, let's make that item number nine under administrative. Ms. Jones? No. Mr. Blaylock? Okay. All right. Uh, we'll move right into the administrative committee report. Item number one is discussion of issuance of a certificate of public conveyance and necessity, or COPCN of operation of emergency air ambulance transportation services to Air Methods Incorporated, or Air Methods Corporation. Uh, <clears throat> backup is in the book. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We do have one request to speak, so if you come forward, please give us your name and address for the record. Loretta Aiken, 1828 Sundown Drive, Navarre. Recently, I attended a meeting in Navarre and I was approached by somebody who wanted to know what happened to the Lockheed deal. They thought it was interesting that we have a Whiting Field Air Park and that we couldn't make the deal happen. And they went to the next county over. And I just, because I'm out of town a lot, I probably missed this, but I never heard it said here. And I wondered um, just if y'all could educate me a little bit about it, like, um, they wanted a large hangar. We couldn't do it on time, is what I heard. Gulf Power wants $1.2 million to run power out there. And how much will the water cost, and is there roads out there? And there was one other question, too, about the industrial park. Has it ever been certified? And I'll sit down and listen. Absolutely. And I'll feel that question, being the only pilot on the board. Uh, the request for the, for the Lockheed hangar had to do with, a, with an 80,000 pound airplane and uh, we didn't have any runways uh, other than, than Whiting that would, that would uh, handle the airplane and we didn't have a runway long enough in inventory to handle the airplane. Uh, so that was, that was pretty much what happened. We would love to have had the project but uh, Milton T is only 2,500 feet long, and it's only certified for light general aviation. Uh, Whiting has probably has the, the uh, bearing load, but again, we didn't have the infrastructure uh, in place yet to uh, handle the hangar. So that's, that's what happened to it. But uh, what you have to keep focus on, yeah, we'd, we'd much, much rather have had it hit Santa Rosa County. But uh, because it didn't, uh, second best choice is somebody to the right or the left of us. So it's still within driving distance for our folks to, to uh, find employment. Yes, ma'am. So I'll ask her, this person the question, if they want something else, please come to Santa Rosa County. 
Um, that was my main concern. And are we certified at the industrial park yet? That's um, that's on purpose. Uh, I'll let Commissioner uh, Salter answer sure. that one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, we're going through the process, doing the assessments. Supposedly around August to September, the I-10 park will be ready to be certified and the 160 acres at the end of Jeff H. Road, that will also be ready to be certified. But going back to the Lockheed Martin project, uh, Shannon Ogletree and I talked numerous times with a young lady who wanted to bring that project to the county and we were very thankful that she was wanting to do that. Like Commissioner Melvin said, Peter Prince, I believe it's a 4,000 foot runway. 2,500. 3,500? 2,5. 2,5. You're saying 3,5. Well, 3,700. Well, that's with overruns. No. Nope. You no. sure? All right. It, anyway, Peter Prince runway was not long enough. Uh, we didn't have the size of hangar they wanted. Uh, we really looked at the potential to meet the timelines uh, at Whiting Aviation Park, which would have been ideal, but obviously we're, we're not there yet. Uh, we did make a commitment to that lady. Hopefully in the future, we will have Whiting Aviation Park up and running. Um, and that's just a good example of why we have to move forward with getting the infrastructure, getting that part ready to go, because we're going to keep missing opportunities like that if we don't. Is the road paved? Could I, as an individual, drive on a road and find this park? Because I've never seen it. If you go, uh, answer your question, yes. If you go to the Eastgate Road, the back entrance road to Whiting Field, uh, as you make that big turn going toward the back security gate, all that property on the left, uh, that's the potential Whiting Aviation Park. That's good. I just want to see us succeed at this. And I know Jerry's probably going to throw rocks at me, but um, I know that Bill Pullum's property is in foreclosure at the industrial park area. And I'm wondering, would it not be valuable to have that property with ours, and I'm sorry to even talk about buying property, but to me, when you look at the total package, it may be beneficial, and you might be able to get a really good deal from the bank. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we'll move on now. Uh, item number one is discussion of an issue of cer uh, certificate for public conveyance and necessity, COPCN, for operation of emergency air ambulance services, transportation services to Air Methodist Corporation. I move this for approval without objection. Here none passes. To Thursday's, Thursday's agenda. I'm sorry, to Thursday's agenda. Yeah. And, and Thank you we, very much. And we've got representatives both from Baptist Life Flight and, and their methods here. I think we're, we're going to probably have to do the COPCN, uh, uh, tie that to their, uh, their consummation of their, their arrangement. So we'll have to work out those details, but we'll have that on the agenda for you on Thursday. Okay, uh, item number two is discussion of the county-owned sites in East Milton for proposed judicial facility. As you remember, this board uh, resolved to put two pieces of property on the ballot, let the public pick between the two, the property, uh, a piece of property already in inventory in East Milton and a potential prop piece of property out on Highway 90. Uh, Mr. Walker, are you going to run a slideshow on this? or Dan, I just... Uh, Roger, you want to put that up? Yeah. And, and I had asked the engineering department to come up with uh, the 22-acre tw sites trying to keep it comparable. Now, I don't know that there's anything magic about that other than that was the uh, sized property that we've been looking at over it on uh, US-90. And so these were, the, these were the parcels that you see they, they, they came up with is, is uh, Roger, you want to show them the, the Jeff H, Jeff H Road, which really is, is that's Jeff H Road to the uh, east of the property. Uh, the fairground uh, is immediately to the west. Uh, that's, that's cut out of 132 acres uh, that, the, that the board had bought, and you see that it's separated from the, the back of the state prison by the the, the fairgrounds, 
Uh, the red, red piece is the transition road, and this is to the north of the DJJ property. Uh, it, it's running, it, it, there's a, the, the, the difficulty with that is it, it's, it's, um, there's about a 50, 40 to 50 foot fall on that particular piece of property. But that's part of that parcel that the board had that bought years ago and in, in when we purchased the property for the prison, the, the current jail, and the, that infill of the industrial park. The yellow site is the parcel that's on um, the industrial boulevard and that's directly across from the clear wire building and that's that's the potential place that we've used in the past for the parking lot for those two two buildings but that's you see what the the that also has rail access and has some some value to it and then the green property to the south is the uh industrial the the i-10 park uh and it's located off of 87 uh, it is included in the military airport zone and it's it's fine for economic development um it is the the military airport zone prohibits uh public assembly uh which that's what this would be deemed so those were the sites that we look at there may be others uh, there's no magic about it. We were just trying to put the, the find the best site uh, that would that would match for what the the board's looking for. Where where are the, uh, the where's the preponderance of infrastructure? The sewer, water, gas, high speed internet, uh, fiber optic cable. Where is that? How does that locate itself? Pretty much each of the I believe each of these pro properties I would think with the the is going to have the infrastructure fairly proximate to it, I would believe. We, we've not done all that work yet in the in the week, but uh, each of these should be be fairly easy because you've got the, the Jeff H. Ro H. Road piece is directly across from the jail prison. That has the full access. I mean, it has full infrastructure. Obviously, the, the uh, yellow piece does. Pullum property should. I don't know about inter, I don't know about internet internet access and that particular things, but uh, it's certainly going to have water sewer. No, we just have to go back and get engineering to, to to update some of that information. Could you could you get them to look at that for us by Thursday? Sure. I think that's going to be necessary in order to, to form an opinion. We're right. going to need to know where those uh, which one of those sites are served and which aren't. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Salter, <clears throat> if we're going to continue to move forward with a potential East Milton site, I'd like for us to reconsider putting Cotton Byron property back in the mix. Uh, that way, if that work gets at least for assessment, mm -hmm. uh, he said he had indicated or sent us a letter saying that he would donate that land, and that would prevent us from having to use our industrial lands if we want to have an East Milton site. I agree with that completely, and, and I, was, I meant to comment earlier. The one in yellow, uh, the Industrial Boulevard uh, Courthouse site, I, I think that land really needs to be reserved for industrial. I don't think we need to consider that. It's my personal opinion, uh, but I uh, certainly think that uh, we should include the, the uh, Cotton Byram site as well. Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree uh, with, with uh, you and Commissioner Salter. I think putting the, uh, the Cotton Byron property back in the mix is, is probably a good idea. Just looking at these four parcels, I think this kind of gives you an example of the quandary that you're in when you're looking for an, an appropriate piece of property for a judicial facility. The yellow site is one of the only sites available with the rail spur. So we're going to, if we put a courthouse there, we've just kind of shot ourselves in the foot from an economic development speaking uh, perspective for that, uh, that uh, prime access to rail. The red site has a 50-foot fall, 50-foot change in elevation from front of the property to the back. So I don't know how, how many loads of dirt we'd have to haul in there to level that out, but that's a, that's a chunk when you're talking about over 22 acres. 
and then it's adjacent to a permitted wastewater treatment plant. So we'd be putting the courthouse right next to a sewer facility. Um, the Pullen property down there south of I-10 is in a military airport zone. You can easily see uh, OLF Santa Rosa to the right of that property. It's within that military airport zone and public assembly is not even a permitted use for that site. Uh, you've got student pilots there at OLF Santa Rosa uh, that would be in, in very close proximity to our, our judicial facility. So that leaves one more and that's the Jeff H. Road site which is on uh, Jeff H. Road is a, a two-lane road in really poor shape last time I was out there. You've got a rail crossing. You know, the rail goes north of Highway 90, so you have to cross the railroad tracks to get there. There's no light, and that's not a controlled crossing, is it? Is it a controlled crossing? Okay, it's a controlled crossing. There's no light at, at that location, though, so, and I'm sure the road would have to be uh, beefed up substantial or completely redone if you put a judicial facility out there. So, um, you know, the four sites that we have, there's only one that seems like it's marginally uh, sufficient, and that would be on Jeff Eights, and uh, it still would take a substantial effort to bring it up, just the, 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 the work that you'd have to do outside the site to bring it up uh, to where it would be suitable. So I, I think we need to uh, look at the, uh, like Commissioner Salter said, the Cotton Byron property, see what our other, other options are, and, and take a look at everything. Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I appreciate the effort to look out here. It's, it's, uh, it's taken a long time to get this discussion moving this way, so I appreciate the support. Uh, I agree with what fellow commissioners say, you know, the, the I-110 property to the south of Interstate 10 is pretty much off the, off the table, uh, and that may tie in as far as uh, talk to uh, former Senator Clary this past weekend about just like with Cotton Byram, uh, he's made a mention of offering a property which would basically be south of I-10 and east of 87 in that corner up there. However, it may very well fall in the same acre zone uh, already uh, there. I've always been a proponent for uh, Cotton Byram's property and, and, and we've had that letter sent to us again when we started looking at properties uh, in the perimeter of Avalon and 90. I agree with the uh, industrial park site, Jeff Freight site, uh, you know, the transition road sites, they all have weak points in them. Uh, my question though is when we put out the RFP, we asked for, I believe, 10 plus acres. And now we're looking at, you know, because of comparison, 22 plus acres. I've always thought, and, and at one point, Cindy Anderson, who, who was an engineer, design, uh, laid out a plan to put the Judicial Center uh, just north of where we see the sign that says SRC Jail, in that dark area right there. Uh, that was always the place where I envisioned it to be. Because all these sites, the, the sheriff's already told us, if I have to load a prisoner in a vehicle and move that prisoner, if I move them two miles, 200 yards, or three, four miles across town, there's not a big cost difference uh, in that, or cost savings in that. We still have capital outlay for a vehicle, deputies, uh, vehicle maintenance, you know, all, everything. You know, I don't have to go through all that. So I go back to where I'd like to see staff, and also you could see the road that's laid out there. If you see just to the west of the SRC jail, uh, that's Judicial Drive. That would be, if you go straight north of there, where 87 North-South Connector would tie in. Uh, there, is, as Sam mentioned before, that, that, that would be a, a very good route uh, from there. Citizens in Navarre and, and Midway could easily access this, and, and to the degree the citizens in Gulf Breeze, because once they cross that tall bridge to come from Gulf Breeze to Avalon Boulevard, whether it's up Avalon Boulevard to Highway 90 or hit the interstate and come out to Highway 87, you, you've paid the toll. It's all, you know, that toll's been paid 
even if we build it at the foot of the bridge on the on, on Garcon Point, you still paid the toll. So, you know, a few more miles out there. I would like to take a good hard look at the property that falls in between the sign that says DJJ and SRC Jail uh, <clears throat> and that road, uh, because if you continue that, I think that's plenty of property. Uh, I'm not sure who owns actually the property identified as DJJ, if that's still county property under our control, because there's you see just a little bit of a building there just below the DJJ sign, but there's a lot of vacant land around there. So how do we incorporate that to where the idea always was that I've pushed forward, and, and we know from discussions with uh, the clerk of courts that you know that idea is shrinking. The movement of prisoners is lessening because of electronic communication, but there's still a point in time when that prisoner gets to appear before uh, the judge before a, a, a jury, and this cost savings that would be involved, uh, and I have estimates of that from several years ago, could be at least $50,000 a year, maybe today as much as $100,000 a year in transporting prisoners. Uh, the sheriff did indicate he can walk them back and forth if, if it's that close in proximity. So uh, although that is the price is coming down because of how many times we got to move it. There is still a cost identified there. So I, I'd like to, for this board to uh, direct staff to look at that piece of property and, uh, and, and come back to us along with what Commissioner Melvin recommended is uh, all, all the communication access, the infrastructure access, which I believe if we have it at DJJ, we have it at the jail, we're going to okay. find surely we have it there. So. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask the staff to secure a commitment from Mr. Byron, make sure he's still interested in having that discussion with us, to uh, please uh, label the sites with their uh, utilities and uh, bring that back to us for Thursday, please. Uh, and I would like to do that in form of a motion without objection. If we can, we certainly will. Okay. Uh, is there anybody that wants to speak to the uh, to the uh, East Milton site discussion? Yes, sir. Come forward, please. Name and address. My name is Sam Mullins, 5922 Allentown Road. Um, Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I gave each one of the commissioners, and I believe uh, one for Hunter Walker and Miss Angela Jones, a little packet there that I put together. And you can, if you don't mind, I'd like for you to put your map that you had back up. Uh, thank you. Um, and the first, the first part of this shows exactly what you have there on the northern part, uh, excluding the I-10 uh, industrial part. Um, if you flip over the next page, and this is a is a tax um, thing from uh, now nah, I'm running short I'm sorry can y'all share <laughs> I apologize I ran out of ink <laughs> uh, anyway I was going what, what I've got here the next page is from the Greg Brown's office tax appraiser's office and my first question to y'all is why on the transition road property is that broken out when it shows here that it's 113 acres and why did they choose the worst part of the property when it came to elevation whenever the front part of that property has less than a five foot elevation change? Can anyone answer that question? Mr. Blaylock. Mr. Mullins, are you talking about this property here? Look at I'm there. talking about right, right there, yes sir. Um, the that tax. Is, that, is, that is down range of a current gun range. There's a permitted gun range here and this is the transition road and this was 22 and a half acres that fit there. Well, I according mean, to the map I have, it shows transition road being to the right of the J, last J on the DJJ sign. Now that's according to what was, you know, what? That's not accurate. That's not accurate? Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. There is a driveway that parallels the Gulf Power, but that driveway serves just the treatment plant site. Uh, City of Milton's gonna upgrade that driveway and it served the DJJ facility. But the 
right away that's reserved and had been planned is this extension follow the arrow. I thought that was uh, Judicial Boulevard. That's the future 87 bypass right away uh, that's Mr. been reserved. Mr. Playlock, the gun range that I'm familiar with out there is a totally enclosed uh, interior gun range belongs to uh, Blackwater and you can go in there and shoot all sorts of stuff. Now there may be another one but everybody's shaking their heads. I've been in that one. It's an interior gun range just like the military has. Yes, the, uh, the state prison has their indoor, I think, the one you're describing here, but this is our sheriff's gun range that's been permitted. Okay, I just wanted to clear it up because... Okay, and that's, but you, what you're showing there, that's to the, a good ways to the west of the uh, Santa Rosa County Jail, is that correct? Well, according to what I looked on the map there, it was about 200 feet to the west of the Santa Rosa County, excuse me, the Sheriff's Department. So you actually have area behind your jail and your Sheriff's Department, which would not be in the way of your gun range. The, uh, the reserve right away is 150 feet, Mr. Mullins, for that future bypass. I, I understand, but you have 200 feet there. That's, that's my point. And all along in this consideration, no one, and this is what we've been asking all along, is, is that we would consider building a courthouse or, judicial, or criminal justice center, if you will, attached to the jail so that it would minimize security cost, minimize operation cost, make for a smaller footprint that would allow to save the taxpayers' dollars. That's what we've asked all along. And in these considerations and the properties you have here, none of them are anywhere near the jail. Am I correct in that? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. The gun range is about 200 feet from the, the property you're talking about. You want to put a courthouse next to a gun range? where people are in that courthouse doing business all day long. Is, me, is that me, an me, indoor me, range or an outdoor let, range? Let me finish. And then you keep saying that we're asking to do this and that. Well, there are other people who have asked us not to do this. So when you say you keep asking, there are a lot of people who talk to me who don't want it in East Milton. So you got both sides. So you're, you're for spending more of our tax dollars. Well, is, that, is that correct? Well, no, that's no, not we, correct. We'll, We'll get to that. But if, if you put an industry on that site you're talking about, what would that industry pay in taxes over 50 years? I thought that the job of the county commissioners was to be about governance, not about economic development and property development. I think the job of uh, county commissioners is common sense. I agree with that. Well, now, well, now, uh, one, I'll one, finish up here, and then I'll let other people have a chance to speak, because I know a lot of people want to speak. In these renderings, and yes, there is a gun range there, but it's an outdoor range, and it could be moved very easily to the back of the property where you have that 50-foot drop, which would actually enhance the safety of the gun range. That could be very easily done for a little expense. Because of the 50-foot drop of the property on Transition Road, it would provide a natural barrier against over, you know, un, uh, unaimed rounds or accidental rounds going off. So that could be included in this plan. But there's three different renderings there, and these are just approximate. The first rendering shows a criminal justice wing attached to the jail with parking, three different areas of parking that you could do, and, and some optional uh, tie-ins to the roads there. But that one alone, in using an engineering scale and measuring on the map, just the footprint of the building, a single-story building would be over 140,000 to 150,000 square foot. According to your engineer drawings, 180,000 square foot on the roof was what was required for everything. So that means you would only have a small portion that would have to be a two-story. The rest of it would be a single story. It would reduce the cost of construction. The next one, a little smaller rendition, same thing. That rendition would bring it down to 130,000 to 140,000 under roof. But if, again, if you build a good portion of it two-story, you could reach that magic 180,000 square foot very easily. 
plenty of area for parking and still have area for additional expansing to the west, especially if you move the gun range. The last rendition that I have, and that you have a lot of people who still would like the idea of maybe leaving the downtown Milton courthouse, having some kind of presence there open, if, if at all possible, and if that were what came about, that's what the people decided. Why not renovate the old downtown courthouse to have family court and divorce court held there? And then make a criminal justice center that would be strictly attached to the jail with a smaller footprint. Even that one there has a footprint of approximately 120,000 square foot with plenty of area for parking, plenty of area east and to the north, I mean, excuse me, west and to the north for expansion. Um, that right there, you, you still reduce your security costs, you reduce your operating cost, and save the taxpayers' dollars. And uh, that's what I ask you all to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Sam made a couple extra excellent points that I would like, uh, I would like the uh, staff to take a look at, and that is... Uh, to uh, remediate the 40-foot the, uh, drop that was pointed out, we could very easily move the gun range. Let's take a look at those options so that we, we're, we've got a full range of options before us so that we've got something to, to pick and choose from, please. Yes, ma'am, name and address for the record. Ruth DuPont Esser, 4371 Maryland Court, Gulf Breeze, Florida. Um, I can't say that I am for the sites that we're showing by the jail. The blue one is sitting next to what's not shown on here, which is a huge dirt pit that's being built for years. It's owned by a guy that owns a construction company, and I just don't think our courthouse should sit next to a dirt pit. And, and, and the bypass road that we say will come through one day, uh, anyone who deals with developing land realizes that that's going to take quite a lot of money to bring that bypass road. It's going to have to cross a lot of wetlands. You're going to have a lot of environmental impact fees, and it's, it's the old bird in the hands better than one in the air. Who knows when we would have a road coming through in order to cause that courthouse to be locally uh, located in a manner that we could get to it. Um, there are two sites that I would think would be logical, Mr. Byron Cotton's and Mr. Charlie Clary's. And, you know, on Charlie Clary's, it's not shown on there, but it's by 87 and the interstate, of which he sounds open-minded to being very reasonable about possibly donating the 20, 22 acres we would need because of the increase in his value of his other property around it that would take place. Um, I realize that the military base is there, but surely if we bought $3 million worth of land just a few short years ago in order to make an industrial park, and surely if Bill Pullum created that industrial park that's next to it, then we could get the variances needed to create a courthouse there. If we put the courthouse in East Milton, East Milton is ripe for growth, and we're going to get restaurants, and we're going to get increased taxation on less backs of less people, so that will help us in all kinds of ways. It gives us jobs and such. The site that I'm least for is the Highway 90 site, and here's why, three reasons. Number one, the traffic is horrendous through there. Since Pace developed, you can sit in a car for God knows how long trying to get through that area, and I just feel like putting more traffic on top of that at this time would not serve well, unless we're planning on creating an overpass that's gonna go across 90 and then touch into Avalon, which then again would cost us a fortune. The second reason is the cost of the property. I can't see why we would pay 1400000 for some property when we have people who are willing to donate us property. The other thing is that that property is not owned by Charter Bank. It is owned by Brian DiMaria. He bought it in December, and on March 5th, Milton Crossings LLC was opened, and that land was transferred to it. I have nothing against this, as long as Mr. DiMaria plans to deed to us that land for free rather than profiting so heavily on us when his land next to it, he bought the whole 44 acres from Charter Bank, the land next to what we would buy would grow up, go up grotesquely in value and he could more than regain any losses that he had taken in that deal. I think that we need to look out for the people. We need to be responsible. This is going to be our centerpiece to our county and we want it to be beautiful and we want to be proud of it. So wherever we put it, we want to consider traffic, we want to consider future development, and we want to consider the pocketbooks of the people of Santa Rosa County. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
Wallace Mahout, 5500 Cox Road, Milton, Florida. Um, I, I keep hearing one argument about uh, putting the new judicial center near the prison being the wastewater treatment plant that is proposed in that area. And I remember during our well-field protection efforts, uh, we had to carve out a little space just for that wastewater treatment plant. We didn't have a problem with that because it was down gradient from all our public drinking water wells. And at that time, the argument was that uh, it's going to be a new plant. It's going to be so much better than the old plant. And now I'm hearing that as an argument against putting a judicial center in that area. So are there two different stories to this wastewater treatment plant? Or is, is the, the, the story that we were given during the well-filled protection efforts that this is going to be a new plant, the water coming out of it will be, you could drink it if you needed to. So I would imagine that the odors at this plant would also be well controlled. So let's stick with one story or the other. Um, the, uh, the Highway 87 location, uh, I've heard that it's in a military airport zone and public assembly is not permitted in a military airport zone. Well, we have two prisons out there in that area. If that's not public assembly, I don't know what is. And they're stuck in their cells. There's nowhere to run if something happens. And um, I know Randy Roy is in the audience today. Um, I did, I did uh, consult the military on this when I was checking into this location. And I did not bring that information with me today. But to me, it seems like, um, depending on what the classification of the judicial center will be, would make it more likely that it could be located there. And uh, I, I will get that information to you this week so that I can talk about it on Thursday. But the more I looked at that location, just because of the military airport zone, didn't seem to be that much of a problem. Um, I like the 87 site, and I like the site next to the prison. The thing about the 87 site is there is no rail. It's still close to the prison. Um, you, you would not have to wait for rail cars if one was going, going through there. Um, so, but I do, I like the 87 site and I like the site by the prison. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Name and address for the record, please, ma'am. Rhonda Chavers, 6308 Fairfield Drive, Milton. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, this is kind of new to me, and I apologize for not being on top of this. Um, how many sites are we considering now? Three? I mean, y'all were talking earlier today, and of course, I've, the information I've gotten is from the newspaper. I hadn't been to these meetings, and sometimes that's not as clear as it should be. But y'all are wanting to consider the site on Highway 90 the site here in the industrial park area, correct? Is that? Yes, ma'am. Sure. The purpose, the, the, this, this discussion item right here is to discuss the East Milton potential. Okay. And we're going to discuss the other one at the okay. next item. Okay, so, so this would, is East Milton. If okay. you would, just limit your comments to East Milton. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, when we voted to put the jail out there, didn't we have a jail tax and we voted for that? And we named a boulevard, Judicial Boulevard, in that area. And that kind of, the, the taxpayers and all of us thought, well, you're going to put a judicial center there because it's Judicial Boulevard. So I guess I would be in favor of us putting a judicial center there, similar to what Sam Mullen said, and put the criminal court there and maybe leave the family court so you don't raid downtown Milton family court and divorce court in that area and renovate it and make it conducive to similar what Walton County did to their courthouse and then in, utilize the land that we already own and not buy new property and take anything out 
of the tax base. The county owns property all over. And then when you do buy property on Highway 90, any other property, you're raiding the tax base even further and weakening our um, resources. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Richard Baldwin, 5326 Morgan Ridge Drive. I uh, just want to speak in behalf of uh, that we, first of all, I know the hard work that all of you put into trying to research all the details. Obviously, the courthouse being built, a new one, we're so overcrowded in downtown Milton, it's pitiful, and we're trying to widen Highway 90. Uh, I think the East Milton is a great choice in the sense that it's off the 87 corridor coming off the interstate. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense uh, that we, as a county, own so much property out there. The beauty of at least deciding to move the courthouse and finally build this courthouse uh, has been in the work how many years? And I think what we're trying to do is not to look at what I want in our county today or what you want in our county today or not even what our children want, but our grandchildren. We have to look forward to why the Santa Rosa County going to it. First of all, I commend all of you. It's, we've done a lot of growth, a lot of major uh, hurricanes that have come through the county. My God, you guys have done a great job. You should pat yourself on, you know, on the back. But we need to go ahead and get this courthouse built. And I think on property that the county already owns is the best way to go. Then also moving it out from downtown Milton. Uh, Milton being the county seat is a blessing and a curse in the sense that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but county property gives no tax base to the city. Is that correct? Okay, that's what I thought. So if we move the courthouse out of it, then finally maybe, then Milton can develop their downtown area to bring restaurants. I have been to San Antonio, Texas, which sits right on a river. Have any of you ever been to San Antonio? It's pretty. I love the black water a lot more. And I think the potential that we have to develop that for our county and bring more taxes into our system and revenues for uh, schools, community centers, senior centers, uh, uh, libraries, bringing things up to date. Again, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to not just my, my generation or the next one, but our grandchildren's generation. Where will we be 50 years from now? And I think that's what we really have to look at. East Milton has tremendous, tremendous potential for growth makes it easy for accessibility from all parts of the county, whether you're down in Navarre and Holly area or up in Jay coming back down. So there is the accessibility issue, I think, that is really good. So uh, I agree with Sam Mullins, a lot of his points and a lot of points that you all have made. But I think that the East Milton, we have so many choices, and the county owns the property already. That's a win-win situation. So what I'd like to see that encourage you all to do is, we, we just got to fish or cut bait and say, let's go ahead and do this and get this new courthouse built because downtown Milton, it is so congested and all the lawyers' offices around it, none of the businesses, I've talked to the business owners, I'm with Historical Society, uh, you know, the Arts and Culture Foundation, we do the Get a Taste for Art, we Walk Art Festival, uh, and I always hear these, uh, like the old post office as well, uh, they'd like to develop more and different things, but there, there's this elephant that sits in the middle of the room, and that's called the courthouse. It's outdated, outmoded, overcrowded, a lot of logistical problems. If we move the uh, courthouse to East Milton, which I think you're all in agreement with, uh, and of course bring to the county vote, I, th I think that that's the best choice, and I commend you for finally getting on the docket, and let's just get on with the business, doing business, get it built. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Janet Coulter, 6953 Summit Place, Milton. Um, I'm here as a couple of things. I am a realtor, um, and my concern with uh, moving the courthouse, all of it, out somewhere else will devastate downtown Milton. We're already there. Um, we have so many empty rentals right now we can't seem to fill them i feel like if the um courthouse is not renovated for sam's plan sounded fantastic i think that that's probably our best option at this moment saving tax dollars um keeping milton intact um i i don't see us 
um, taken that base away from downtown Milton. We have a beautiful city. We are finally getting some activity. I know there's a pizza place going in down there. I know that uh, Docs is putting in a new um, restaurant, and this will be devastating for him. Um, but the family law, I believe, would be um, uh, would sustain that building. We don't have a lot of traffic, maybe twice a month, but most of that's for jury. Um, I think we have plenty of parking over in that parking lot just uh, north of the courthouse and in the back. Um, you know, uh, even building a, a garage and during your renovation, consider a two park, uh, two story or three story parking garage in the back if it, if you, um, if you're, you know, trying to find more parking and, and let that pay for some of the expense. I know people would park. I mean, you go down to New Orleans, down their river walk, you pay for parking. People don't mind doing that. We have a lot of festivals there. Um, our, our historical society would be devastated by this move as well. So those are things to consider. I think Sam's got a great plan and it should be considered Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, ma'am. Did you want to make a comment? <clears throat> we'll try to make this our last comment so we can move on to the next. We're going to we're going to modify the amendment here just very shortly. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Name and record. Name my and name address. is Cindy Coulter Booth, and my home address is fourteen hundred Highway ninety six Molino. But I have a business since nineteen ninety. C. Coulter Corporation on the corner of Berry Hill and Willing. I'm probably the oldest um, business downtown. And if um, the gentleman had come ask me that said he's solicited all the businesses downtown, I would have gave him a different feedback. I do agree with Sam Mullins. That's a great idea. Do y'all plan on moving this little existing in this part of the judicial center? I mean, would this be moved to when the courthouse moves? Y'all would stay here. Well, um, Milton's been very good to me. I have been there when... Um, my buildings were 25% occupiable. I have renovated all the buildings on the corner of Berry Hill and Willie. Um, right now, um, Milton is on its uphill climb, okay? Don't go changing people. The courthouse is a good thing for downtown. It's been our core. It needs to stay our core. If it you go to a lot of the old cities, in Alabama, they preserve that. And I'm not understanding why the Historical Society wouldn't want to preserve, or the Main Street Milton, or um, why they wouldn't want to preserve the court feeling in the courthouse area, and that's what it was intended for. Um, like I said, my business is climbing now. I think that when you start doing this, it's going to start devastating what we already have existing. Um, we have a quiet community. That's why people were drawn to downtown. When people come through, you can feel safe walking the streets. Downtown, you can push your kids. People come in my store because they know that they're safe and it's quiet. I'm afraid that when people come in with the big businesses and think they're going to commercialize us downtown, it's not a good thing. I think what they got on the table about the boardwalk extending it down and making it more a natural uh, family community with the bike trails and all that. But you know, the, um, the, uh, the attorneys and the lawyers that have their businesses downtown, they pay taxes. And so I think that these uh, charitable communities, that, the organizations coming in and not being able to pay taxes like, like I do every year, that that is not a good thing for any town because our tax bases go up being the taxpayers. So I agree with Sam Mullins. I think it's a great idea. I do not agree with the library thing coming downtown. It's just not a good thing. I am a business owner. I've probably been there longer than anybody on that street. So Milton is growing, and I have books to prove it, that we're finally climbing up. So don't go move in the courthouse. Thank you very much. We appreciate your input. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to open it up to the board now, but, but just to kind of cap what I've, the notes I've made from the public, uh, we need to, we need to uh, make sure that Mr. Byram is willing to discuss a property with us. Uh, 
the gun range uh, certainly wouldn't outweigh the courthouse in priority, so we need to, to look at the potential for using the better piece of that land, the level land, and relocating the gun range. Uh, we need the utilities label so that when we see this Thursday, we can have a, a, a better visual of what we're talking about. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd staff with the bar the idea that Mr. Mullins brought forward about uh, the family and divorce court staying in Milton and, and splitting it out uh, and, and take the temperature of the legal community on that issue. And I'll open this up to the uh, other commissioners for comments. Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I heard mention of a, another piece of property that someone may be interested in donating to the county. I did leave that out, and it was not on. Uh, by, I did not do that deliberately. Thank you. Uh, the the uh, the property on 87. I think it was uh, Mr. Clary's property. We okay. need to we need to have that as well. Thank you. A couple things. The um, I'm fine with having staff look at the possibility of, of bifurcating the courthouse functions, but no, when we talk about cost savings, if we have a courthouse in downtown Milton and we have a courthouse in East Milton or, or a courthouse in the Pace area, you're going to have two court security staff, two offices for the clerk of courts, uh, two large facilities to maintain. So there's going to be significant overhead associated with having your judicial facilities located in two separate areas. So, you know, one of the, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, be diligent with, uh, with taxpayer money. That's one thing that we need to get a rough estimate of. If we do, if we were to bifurcate the, the judicial functions of the courthouse, what's that going to mean? And what's that going to mean our, to our judges that may have dockets uh, in family law and criminal? You know, how are they going to handle that if they have, two offices in, in two separate courthouses. Um, the, just, just a few considerations I think we need to keep in mind. Mr. Chairman, is Mitchell, I mean, kind of the more things change, the more they stay the same. When we were looking at, at this in the early 2000s, that was certainly uh, recommended, and in, 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 in I believe uh, Ms. Wright can help me recall, but I believe we looked at that and, and it was a significant increase in the operation, operating expenses. Uh, that, that the old courthouse now, it's a sick old building. I'm not sure that you're going to really going to be able to renovate that, Sam. I'm just telling you, it's it's got marble in it. It's got the marble floors. It goes up, as you know, to to four or five feet. I mean, it is. A, it was a building built in the in the twenties and served well. I I just don't know that that particular concept is going to work. I think we can go back and try to figure out how to how to use the property north of the jail. I don't, with the with the with eighty seven going through there, I don't know how you're going to split that property. I just, I just don't think there's enough property to put the the courthouse there. But we certainly look at that. We can look at uh, Senator Clare's property that had come in. Uh, also, Mr. Bimes, I mean, we can look at all all that. We, obviously, we want to get a quality site for you to look at in, in East Milton as a, as a comparison, and that's what the board directed us to do. That's what we're trying to do. Um, I don't know how you're going to be able to keep the... The, the, the courthouse downtown I mean that was that was that was that was the whole purpose of of, of, the, of the iteration in early 2000s is they were going to renovate the courthouse and they were going to build a, a, a large courthouse a, a large facility behind it to replace it and it just it, it, it was rejected so I'm just the the, the whole point is try to find the best place for it and, and 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 try to get it done because it's a it's just a sick old building on its best day. So I mean we need to be doing the best we can to move forward. We'll we'll try to get these. I just don't know if we're going to have all this done by Thursday. Well, uh, we'll try. <clears throat> it, it, yeah, if if we could uh, nail down the big pieces, uh, looking at the uh, Cotton Byron's property. Uh, taking a look at the feasibility of, of relocating the gun range. Uh, we definitely have to have the utilities labeled. I mean, we, we really can't make an informed decision. I I, all I'm saying that. is you may just have to, it, it may be better to wait two weeks and let us go back and, 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 and include these other two pieces of property 
uh, determine the utilities to each one of them. That's what we had done on the sites mm -hmm. as we were going through the, yeah. the, I the, have, the other I'm, process. So I'm, we're, we're with I'm, you on that. I personally have no problem with that. I don't know what the rest of the board would say about that. Two weeks as opposed to bring it through Thursday. I agree with Mr. Walker. I don't think you can do a yeah. proper assessment by Thursday. So, well, well let's, but we got to find the site, so we've got to sure. bring it back, and in, in, in the sooner the right. better, y'all, and for the public well, and for us. We need we need to nail down <clears throat> the Clary property. We need to nail down the Byron property. Uh, we need to evaluate the feasibility of moving the gun range so we can utilize the better piece of that property, and we need to label the utilities. Uh, and I will note on the on the Clare property, at least tentatively, when we looked at the it, it the the Mars is a is a semicircle, and so I don't it, it impacts the Pullum property for the public assembly, but I don't but I think the the the, the bulk of the Clare property again going by what we saw. Uh, and Roger, you want to try to show the the bulk of what I understand to be the cleared property is going to be uh, outside of the Mars, and you see that you see that. My understanding is that it's uh, closer to the intersection, much closer than the pointer. Right. If, yeah. if uh, you bring the pointer back to the intersection and uh, it's to of the, 87 and 90 right to now. To the west of that And then uh, move area. west just one click right there, I think you're going to see that's, uh, I'm thinking that's what he's talking about. I haven't seen anything in writing. But but, uh, but let us bring that right, back. If I you mean, would, Mr. Cooley, we'll take one more comment on this, and then we're going to move to item three. Jerry Cooley, 6049 Arnie's Way. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. <clears throat> Um, we, we, we talked about it, I know I talked about it in, in 04 and probably as far back as 2000. A simple Google search on the internet of the U.S. oldest courthouses, you'll find some that are 240 years old, operational today. Uh, m most of them um, built at the time with some of the same materials that we have in a courthouse today. Um, the, clearly, the problem with the current courthouse is the basement. It's it's undeniable. You you have uh, it's it's a moisture issue. It continues to be. Um, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to disagree that we can't do anything about it. Uh, there <clears throat> there there's dirt around here, and there's cement around here. And one of the things that I proposed in 2004 was that seal it professionally, back the dirt truck in, fill the, fill the basement full of dirt, cap it off with two feet and call, uh, of cement, and call it a day. You will effectively end your moisture problem when you do that. And, and, and everybody you talk to, that's always the problem. It's a mold issue, it's a moisture issue. It, it continues to be impossible to heat and air conditioning because of the moisture. I think that can be solved relatively easy. Um, I certainly like what Walton County did because they left the, the original facade. You could walk through the historic building into the new court facility. And, you know, I heard a comment by Mr. Walker that it was rejected. Well, I don't know who rejected it. I know there was a lot of discussion. Maybe it was the commissioners at the time. But as we have continued this discussion to move towards East Milton, I think we should also open the discussion again about the courthouse in its current position. I, I, I think the courthouse can be fixed. I really do. We, we missed a grand opportunity in 04 with Hurricane Ivan when money was flowing like milk and honey. We didn't take advantage of some of that. But I believe it can be fixed with, with the right time, with the right attitude. You know, it's, it's real easy to say, well, it's old and I want something new. Well, in, in Philadelphia, they have a courthouse that's 239 years old. Amazingly enough, they were able to get fiber optic cable there. They actually have a working air conditioning and heating system in it. I mean, I hate to throw things away and then, and then leave them up for what anybody might want to do with them down the road. I think it can be fixed. And, that, and serious consideration should be given for the Milton site. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. We'll, <clears throat> we'll move this to the next set of meetings, uh, and that way we'll have more information. We'll be more uh, 
adequately prepared to deal with it. We've closed out this item. You want to speak to us on this item? Yes, ma'am. This is absolutely the last speaker. We've got a big agenda to deal Mr. with. Mr. Chairman, also. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, my name is Romy White. I'm here on behalf of Navarre Press. There are hundreds of acres that the county owns in the East Milton area in the general vicinity of East Milton Road. Um, for whatever reason, I haven't been able to um, talk to the county staff on this yet, but I'm not sure why they only selected um, a few of those um, acres to be presented for consideration for the future courthouse. And so I'd like to ask you, commissioners, if you might want to take a closer look at some of the other county owned acreage out there for consideration or get some more information about why those were excluded or included for the presentation. Also, um, just real quick, I know that we're going to go from um, start talking about the Pea Ridge property so I don't have to come back up. Um, the DeMaria purchase wasn't disclosed at the last meeting, and I was wondering why that happened. And then also, the Santa Rosa School Board purchased 400, 40 acres for $440,000 in the vicinity of the P. Rich parcel last year. And I've been told the appraisal hasn't been done on the DeMaria property yet. And so I'm just, you know, wondering when are we going to do that due diligence, if you might want to address that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm sure we'll hit those. Uh before this day is over. Uh, Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I thank everybody for bringing this subject up after as long as it's taken to get here. Uh, I want staff to take a good hard look at the piece just north of the jail. As I said, it's at one point, I, I had it two years ago when I was trying to get it on the ballot, I had it laid out then to fit in that piece of property. So I really want to take a look at that. but. I do also want to shift focus to the folks downtown. I sit on the downtown redevelopment board. Uh, I've talked to people from Main Street, Milton. What we have downtown right now, uh, business owners like yourself, really don't know the direction that downtown's going to go. And it makes it hard for you as a business owner or a person that respectively may want to develop in downtown to know what's going to happen. Where, where's this courthouse going to go? Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Main Street Milton has a, a very nice brochure on how they would like to refurbish the courthouse. Uh, the Downtown Development Board has, has looked at that. Uh, I see the future of Downtown Milton being very bright. Uh, I don't. I agree with Commissioner Lynchard though. We we have to look at expense. We're talking this morning about moving the courthouse beside the jail to curtail expense and transportation of prisoners. And then on the next note, we talk about building multiple facilities that, you know, everybody's going to know if you have more than one facility, you've got double the, uh, double the labor cost, double, you know, in, in security and different things. So I really want to take a hard look at that. The other thing, I don't think even if we was to do the renovations on the courthouse, as, as was indicated, it could be done while occupied. Uh, doc, you know, so we may want to plan the facility we're building now uh, large enough to go ahead and house everything and then step back and take a look at it. Take a look at Main Street Milton's plan. Take a look at uh, possibly renovating it into a, uh, you know, where just family type court is. Uh, but I, I seriously think that we need to consider uh, looking at the properties, putting it on the ballot for both properties, and, and then build something substantial enough. Because if we if we moved out of it, say if we went into there for a couple of years with family court and everything, and then decide that as a community we want to refurbish downtown, do a proper job of refurbishing it because the facility is is empty. We could do a proper job. I don't see any way to do this, the sizable construction or reconstruction or renovation that would be necessary to do downtown while functions are going on. So I think we need to keep that in consideration for where, where do we want to go. Let's get a facility built that's large enough, that satisfies our needs, and then step back and take a look at where we want to go, whether it's the direction that Main Street Milton wants to go with a community center and 
library and cultural center or keep it in, in the court facilities. But I, I'd just like everybody to kind of be thinking about that because to, to do that would, I think would be very necessary uh, to have the building empty for a time being. So. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Cole. <clears throat> Uh, we'll move that uh, issue to the next set of meetings, as noted uh, staff is clear on what we'd like to see. Item number three is discussion of real, pop real property purchase agreement with Milton Crossings LLC for approximately 22-acre parcel on U.S. Heine, U.S. 90 for proposed judicial facility. Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, in your packet you see that uh, real estate agreement. Uh, it is with Milton Crossing. Um, they were brought in by the, the bank um, several, several weeks ago, several months ago, originally, and I don't know, I think they traded the end of uh, February, so it didn't trade, it change anything of our, our proposal or, or the, the funding or the, the funding, the, the cost or, or anything else, so we were moving forward with it. This is, this is the same, it has the same uh, opt-out provisions that the, the board had, had uh, discussed before. Ms. Jones can go into it. It's the same pricing that we've talked about. Um, to us, it was indifferent who we, who, who we purchased the, pro the, the project from in the event that the, the, the uh, voters approved the project. So that, that, was, that was our thinking on that, and this is the contract. We're going to buy the property from somebody if, ultimately if, we, if that's what we choose to do. But we don't have to. You know, you're opt out until I believe it's November 21st. I got the, uh, I picked my briefing book up Friday and that was the first indication I had that there was anybody in the deal other than Charter Bank and I was really caught off guard by that. Uh, I noticed the comments from the attorney documents to follow and uh, there's a, a purchase agreement, et cetera, but I don't see an appraisal. Uh, has that been done and I just don't have it or where are we? What? No, no, sir, that would standardly be something done during our due diligence period. We've not expended any money on any sort of investigation, be it a phase one environmental study, an appraisal or anything of that nature um, until the property's under contract and then we can go about expending those sums. As Mr. Walker mentioned, um, we can withdraw from the contract at any time prior to November the 20th without any penalty if any of those things were found to be unacceptable or if you all for any reason just decided this was not the place to put a courthouse. Well, I, I just, you know, it seems just absolutely backwards to me to uh, do due diligence on the price after we sign a, a contract for sale based on the public's approval. That's just backwards to my way of thinking, but uh, I expected to see a... Well, just a moment, we'll, we'll open up in a minute, but I, I had expected to see, you know, just the normal stuff, you know, uh, somebody's third party unbiased opinion of what the property's worth, uh, but anybody, anybody else on, on the board like to say something about this before open to the public? Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think... In all fairness, with regards to the valuation, I mean, value is what two parties place on a piece of property. Um, whenever I've bought property, I've never got an appraisal on it before I made an offer. I've always had, an, uh, had a contract in place before you get an appraisal on the property. So I, I don't think anything here is out of the ordinary course of business. Well, you're saying you, you feel like 1.4 is probably a fair offer? I'm sorry? You, you feel like the 1.4 is a fair offer? I, I, I'm, I don't have an opinion right now, but I don't have, I don't know what it's worth. I think it's, it's the offer. You know, I mean, okay. we, we put out the, the request for proposals. This, this board selected that proposal uh, at an earlier meeting. Okay. It's, it, is, it is contingent upon, uh, basically at our whim. We can cancel the contract for, for any reason. And I think the, the, the important thing to remember is that at our last set of meetings, we said that this would be put on the ballot and all the, what we're trying to do in East Milton is select another site for the ballot so that our residents will have two options. We're not going to make the choice for you. Where do you want it? Do you want it in Pea Ridge or do you want it in East Milton? You're going to make that choice. And we're trying to find a suitable property in East Milton to put on the ballot. I'm all for 
looking at the property that, that, that Sam proposed. Looks like it makes sense. Now, I don't know how it will impact the proposed uh, 87 connector, but we'll find out. Uh, again, we're not making the decision on where the courthouse goes ultimately. We're giving you options. The people in Pace, the people in Gulf Breeze, Navarre, Milton, Jay, you're going to have to look at the property in P Ridge and the property in East Milton and determine which is more suitable. And knowing that, there's going to be an additional cost associated with the property in, in P Ridge. The choice is yours. Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, another thing I'd like to look at, too, uh, we now, by the citizens coming forward and being able to look at East Milton, we have one, if not two, potential uh, independent owners of properties that are willing to uh, deed over to this county 15 to 20 acres uh, because they realize the value of, the, of that project on the remaining acreage. There's a benefit cost there. Both uh, Cotton Byram said that years ago. I'm sure Mr. Clary realizes that. Now that the Highway 90 property isn't the loan property that we're looking at, and we have citizen support to look at East Milton, and I thank you again for that. Uh, Mr. DeMera and the, the uh, holding company that he stood up now, I've approached him one time about doing just that, giving us a piece of property. He did offer to give us a 60-foot right-of-way off the, what would be our western border of, of the piece that we've identified off of his property and told his attorney and our attorney to add that to the contract so we would have that northern connectability, you know, connectability. But now perhaps we ought to go back and try to lever that. But that's, that's just some food for thought that staff may ought to do uh, because, like I say, there's two other people stepping up to the plate on that piece of property. The other part of the sales contract that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of that the county attorneys had has written in here that in vet, basically in the event that we do not pass a sales tax or that property is not chosen, we're not penalized in any way. So, you know, we're not obligated to buy this property. We're not obligating ourselves to buy this property. We're just getting an option so the property can clearly be put on the referendum this year. Commissioner Salter. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I agree with Commissioner uh, Lynchard. Uh, the last time we met, we agreed. We went through an RFP process. Uh, the P Ridge property emerged as our choice. So we have that one for the public to choose or not choose. And then when we met last time, we were talking about coming up with an East Milton site for the same consideration. <clears throat> so I think what I'd like to see is to leave the Pea Ridge site where it is, eventually, hopefully, get to one in East Milton and then let the people decide on which one they want. Thank you, Mr. Salter. Mr. Cooey. Jerry Cooey, 6049 Arnie's Way. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is Greg Brown was successful in his defense of fairness in taxation, and there's $10 million on the table coming to Santa Rosa County, and I'd like to encourage the Board of County Commissioners to use that $10 million on this courthouse issue right out of the gate before it gets spent for something else. I think uh, m money in the hand right now could be well spent and uh, take a tax burden off the citizens. Um, I, I certainly understand what has gone on in the last few, men uh, few, few meetings and I'm going to have to say I think you were a little rash as a board, a little quick to decide to put two things on the ballot. There's, there's way more things at play here than, than two places. Um, from a personal standpoint, I believe on the ballot needs to be will you support a tax for a judicial center, yes or no? Amen. And secondly, secondly, when, when folks make that decision, then maybe there's a 90, maybe there's East Milton, maybe there's Renovate where it's sitting in, in, in a reasonable package. I'm going to tell you, like I said before, I stand up in support of, a, of getting some kind of new facility here. And if you put two items on the ballot, 
I think it's going to fail. You got, you're going to have a split vote, and it'll, it'll wind up causing too much confusion. So I, I, I want you to, to think about that for a moment, to separate those two items, because I think it's going to be a problem in the voter's mind. Now, I want to get back to this Highway 90 property, and I'm going to tell you that I rise in opposition to that Highway 90 property. And I rise in opposition to some of the behaviors that I have seen. Okay, this, this is a complete remake of the purchase of the Pullman property, playing around with appraisals and, and this and this, and we go here and we go here and we don't know who we're dealing with. Uh, Ms. Jones, in order to come up with $1.4 million, somebody needs to know what a piece of property is worth. I strongly support what Commissioner Melvin said this morning. Due diligence needs to be done ahead of the game, not after the game. I'm going to tell you right now that that property was valued at $26,000 an acre last year. I want somebody to explain to me how it gets to $63,000 an acre this year. Okay? That's wrong. That's obscene. It should not be considered. We've heard the school board, $11,000 an acre. They just bought near that. Okay? There are too many questions swirling around this Highway 90 property. As a citizen who, who has done his best to keep this government open, it's being, the door's being slammed on us again. This appraisal should have been done a long time ago. Just because somebody believes it's worth $1.4 million doesn't make it so. There's no way that property is worth $1.4 million. There's, there's the comps for you right there. 20, 26,000 school board buys for 11,000. It's there. It's not worth it. The taxpayers don't believe it's worth it. I'll say it again. I rise in opposition to this property being on the ballot, period, end of story. And I, my, my final statement is I would like to see a commissioner today make a motion to move that off the ballot. Um, I think it's a bad choice. There's too many questions around it. I think we need to step up and eliminate that from this pool of potential locations. Okay, $1.4 million is not a good deal for anybody. And, and, and as I've said before, and I'll say it again, if that property remains in the queue for a courthouse, you can count on your sales tax not passing. Turn the light on there, Commissioner. Just put, push the button, make the light, red light come on. My name is Robert Rollo. I live at 9250 Barney Broxton Road in East Milton. I'd like to speak on behalf of part of Mr. Cooey's request. I want to commend the commissioners for taking the diligence to shop and look. I personally would support a sales tax for the courthouse. I cannot support it if it's tied to buying land anywhere. You don't need to buy land, and that's my opinion. But I think if it takes two weeks, like Mr. Walker said, before you get all the cost in order, I think the commissioners ought to take whatever time is necessary. Put one item on the ballot. If you put two or three items on there tied to a sales tax in either place, I personally am going to get out and work to defeat it. But I would support a sales tax just for the courthouse. But if you tie it to two or three parcels, ain't no way. So I would ask that you take the due diligent time to consider all of the options and all of the places, put one item on the ballot, and let's go with it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sharon Glass, 5661 Windrun uh, Road, Place, I'm sorry, in Pace. And uh, what I would like to do, I've been following the newspaper. I've been following a lot of things about the properties. And it's apparent in the room today, most people are for the East Milton property or doing something with the downtown property. 
Um, Mr. Cole, you've been to our meetings at Santa Rosa Tea Party Patriots, and I believe they made clear what we wanted, which was the East Milton property. And at that time, you told us that you would push forward with it. Mr. Melvin, I believe that you have helped to bring that to the front, too. Now, I challenge you two men today as to why you voted for the Highway 90 property when that could have been stopped. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you right there. I sure. voted against the Highway 90. I'm sorry. Okay. Then we have a missing um, co uh, commissioner here because he's, he's ill. I understand that. So, um, but it could have been stopped. And let me say with what I have seen, and I will just like the other people that have stood here work diligently, and I have a marketing background and a media background, I will work diligently to see that we do have a new courthouse because we need a new courthouse. There's not anybody in this room that does not agree with that. But we do not need more land. We have enough land. And, um, and I would think that we have you in the position that you are to make the right decisions. And I don't understand why we brought all, we have all the property out at the jail with it named uh, Judicial Boulevard or whatever the name is, if we didn't intend originally to build a courthouse there. And uh, with all that's happening on the 87 corridor, I think that that is an ideal place. And I looked at the growth, South, South Santa Rosa County is growing rapidly. So you can look for things to happen out there. But I think you need to think about, just as you were challenged a minute ago to pull that 90 off, there is too much going on. I've even watched some of the trails and they just don't look good. And I say pull that off, there's enough out there for us to decide on than to waste our time moving from LCC to LCC to whatever. So that's just my, you know, opinion. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The question is asked as to why, and I'm gonna identify it as myself, supported going to Highway 90. I supported the two and a half mile radius because I could never get this type of reaction before for East Milton. For the eight years that I've tried to get it out there for the last two years ago when I tried to get it on the ballot. Uh, public record shows uh, how many times I've tried to get this into discussion and East Milton never got this type of reaction. Uh, Loretta's back there shaking, her, pointing her finger towards herself. So Loretta was there with me the whole time so she can identify that. The Tea Party told me that they'd, they would support it when I talked to them. Uh, and, and finally it's happening. I mean, it, it's happening to get out there. But we do, I believe, owe it to the citizens that aren't here today, the citizens that are in the rest of the county. Uh, you know, I never one time had another commissioner support me to, to look at East Milton. And, and they're just being honest with the public on, on how they feel. Commissioner Sauter, Commissioner Lynchard, on, on their feelings of not supporting it is truly in the best interest of, of Santa Rosa County. And now that we're hearing from citizens, there's some reconsideration there, and I appreciate that. Uh, so kind of stay cognizant of that. I appreciate your support. But now, you know, last meeting we we heard from the public that they want a choice. You know, there's a group in here today saying now not give the public a choice. As, as a representative of the people of Santa Rosa County, uh, I've heard from people on the south end, people in Gulf Breeze, people that feel like they they want that choice. So, you know, we're kind of tore betwixt and between, uh, uh, giving the citizens their choice on 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 the ballot. I thought that's what this country is all about in, in doing so. So, I'm willing to listen some more, uh, but I'll I'll continue as I always have to support the East Milton for the location. Name and address for the record, please. Carl Hudgens, 3412 Barkwood Drive and Pace. Uh, as far as the choices go, I just don't think you need to be between the choice between the Highway 90 and the P Ridge, uh, the Highway 90 P Ridge property and the East Milton choice. That's, uh, when I go into Walmart, I don't uh, just have two choices, okay? We've got a lot of things on, in play here. We don't need to narrow it down to two choices 
when we're still investigating the best of now we're talking about four choices. So to make a decision right now today or even this week or anytime soon that those are the two choices when we still need to look at the Byron property, the Clary property, uh, I think there's some things with the Pullen property that we already own that I'm not convinced that that's a dangerous location. When I look at the, uh, the direction of the uh, flight paths and things like that, I don't see that piece of property in those flight paths, but uh, I could be educated more on that and I think we all could be more educated on that. So I think we're getting to where we needed to be about two or three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, is now we're starting to say, okay, let's seriously look at the best location for our, account, our courthouse, bearing in mind uh, the cost of the different locations. Uh, and I spoke at one of the first one when we still had four locations on it that I thought the Highway 90 P Ridge was the worst choice of the five locations we were talking about at that time. I still think it is because of the traffic and the cost and the just the look of the thing. It looks like now we've got a new owner that we're dealing with. We've, uh, we were dealing with Charter Bank. We started out calling it the Colwell property the Colwell Banker property. We didn't even know who owned it then. That was the name of the realtor. Then, we, then I asked here, I said, well, who really owns that? I was told Charter Bank owns it. And Colwell Banker was the realtor and Charter Bank was the owner. Now I'm told that an LLC that was formed in March of this year uh, owns it. So we're gonna do a deal with them. And he, so uh, that, that particular property that we seem to be so focused on so early in this looks to me, I mean, some people could come to the conclusion that that was the intent was we had that property picked before we even uh, started the discussion of anything because we narrowed that uh, search down to that two mile radius of the uh, Highway 90 Avalon Boulevard and that was the only property in that search pattern basically. Uh, JDL owned a piece that was, I think, just a little bit outside of that search pattern. So now I think we're far starting, because of the citizens getting involved and asking questions, uh, and because our commissioners are listening to those citizens, like, like good uh, delegates that we elected uh, should do, uh, now we're getting to the point where we need to be. I don't understand the... Uh, the diagram of the East Milton property was put up there. Uh, I went out, rode out with Sam, and then we looked at the uh, uh, property appraiser's uh, plats, and there's 113, million, uh, 113 acres where that ju uh, juvenile justice center is out there. And it just takes up one small corner. And I understand there's probably going to be a, the 87 connector go through there but 113 acres is a pretty good sized piece of property when you're just looking at, a, at one facility there. On the revenue stream and the tax that's been discussed, the $10 million that uh, Greg Baum won, that's something that I wasn't aware of. I remember that being discussed a long time ago. But it looks to me like we can build a courthouse without adding a tax to the citizens if we build a reasonable courthouse. We don't build a Taj Hall. We build it on land we already own or someone gives us free. We use, if that $10 million develops, we use that. And we take half of the revenue stream that we've been building, ballparks, uh, boat ramps, uh, arenas, uh, Every time I come up here, we're voting on another $20,000 for a little bitty uh, gazebo with a few little things around it. At the time, when, about 20 years ago, when we dedicated that stream to recreations and parks, we needed it because the county was not building, had not built any recreation facilities at that time. But in 20 years, we've built multi-million dollar ballparks all around this county. That's and that's terrible. a good thing but we don't need to keep building them now. They're built. My kids play, my grandkids play at these parks, and that's good. 
It doesn't cost as much to maintain them as it did to build them, and half of that revenue stream needs to go to building our courthouse. That's true. Then if we need a tax after that, we've given enough. We've, we've done our due diligence. We've co contributed out of the county purse what, need, what we can. So I appreciate all the efforts. I think we're getting to where we need to be. Just one moment there, Carl, uh, Commissioner Cole. Thank you, uh, Carl. We did at one time get a significant amount while we were building these parks and stuff into the recreation of the franchise fee, but that amounts down to $50,000 a year. And if you took half of that from each one of us, there'd be hardly enough money to maintain these parks in the way they are. But say even if it was enough money at 25000 a year, it would still only give you, uh, you know, $125,000 a year to put into uh, to building a courthouse. So had it been where it was before uh, and over the years we've taken money away from that, you know, that, that would be a feasible request. But I, I just wanted to make sure you were acknowledged of that. Uh, it would be hard to include that as part of the payment every month. Well, the, those numbers don't work out the way I understand it. Uh, we get 5%. We all pay 5% on our electric bill every month for a I revenue stream that goes into you, the county. Okay. Okay. Half of that, I understand, about half goes to roads. Right. I, I believe a portion goes to roads and a portion goes to recreation. Mr. Chairman, if I could have the budget director please break but, it down. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a little far afield here. Uh, well, it just, it just needs discussion. to be clarified. Right, but okay. now the, 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 we the can correct verify number is $75,000 a piece a year, Carl, not 50. It's $75,000 a year a piece uh, that each commissioner gets for recreational or any, actually I think, I think it's any lawful expenditure uh, within it, the district. Can I get with Ms. Bell and yes, let's absolutely. actually verify those numbers because uh, I think 5% of all our electric bills, uh, even half of that breaks down to more than we're talking about Well, here. We're, we're talking about the money that the, the commissioners before. If it's there, it's there. If it's yeah. not, then I'll right. apologize and say there's not that much money there. But I, right. I, we built multi-million yes, dollar ballparks in all the districts across this ballparks and horse arenas and everything else. Yeah. I think we're over $40 million worth of those facilities now, probably. Totally. So, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, name and address. Did, Debbie Ch Gano, 2143 Chatsworth Drive, Navarre, Florida. Um, one thing that, that's been going on here, one consistency that's been here, is to make sure that we are not spending money that we don't have or that we can't acquire. Uh, and uh, the, the um, agreement to put two choices on the ballot are linked to a sales tax increase. I strongly recommend, because people in this day and age are having a tough time surviving on what they have, uh, and that's the consistency. We need to make sure that we're not spending any more than, than we have. Thus, we need to stay with um, property that we already own, sell off property that we don't need, that we can use that money then to, to put back into uh, the courthouse. But you should absolutely separate a sales tax referendum from a property choice referendum, or you are going to completely destroy the option of having a courthouse. People need to have a separation between those items. If you put them together, they will not vote for that tax increase that's tied to that, that property choice. So highly recommend that you separate those two out uh, and that we go with what we have. That is the consistency that we've been talking, and that's why you're getting the people showing up here is because you brought to the table a property that was going to cost us a lot of money. Us, not you, us. And you brought that property to the table. And now we're finding out that there are some things on that property that we just don't like. You know, there's a lot of hidden stuff going on with that property. So that property needs to be taken off the table completely. We need to go with property that we already own. We also need to look at 
the county quit being property owners, start putting property back on the tax rolls so that we can gain taxes from property that's just sitting there right now. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, just a quick comment. We keep talking about there's 113 acres out of the industrial park that's available for development. Uh, years ago, when the Board of County Commissioners at that time had a plan to expand Peter Prince Airport and swing that runway toward the northeast, a large portion of that property was acquired for that clear zone as that runway would be extended. And a lot of that property is wetlands and environmentally sensitive land where it drops off that backside and goes down toward the Blackwater River. But a lot of that property initially was purchased for Peter Prince clear zone. That's just for information. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Sulphur. Yes, ma'am. Name and address. Wallace Mahout, 5500 Cox Road, Mountain, Florida. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I agree with taking the Highway 90 property off the, uh, the ballot entirely. Um, when I am out and about, um, I mean, in the past few months, I've talked to hundreds of people. I haven't heard one person say that they think buying more property or putting that judicial center on Highway 90 with the way the traffic backs up already is a good idea. So, you know, if I'm talking to hundreds of people, then there must be also thousands of people who would agree. Now, maybe there are some who do want it on Highway 90, but from what I've seen and, and spoken to the public, they don't want it on Highway 90. Um, so that's, that's just another point I wanted to make. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, well, it looks like we've got another comment from the floor. Would you mind? Or you want to... Yes, ma'am. Hi, Andrea McDermott, 8093 Sleepy Bay Boulevard, Navarre. Um, I know that putting it on Highway 90 is going to cross a problem that Jerry touched on a little bit is you're going to find people have to use Garson Point Bridge. And I guess that's one way to get somebody to use that bridge. The other thing is, uh, Mr. Lynchard, you mentioned that uh, value of property is what the people who place on it, the people selling and the people buying, and that usually the appraisal is done after uh, the contract is, is decided on. But before you go into that contract, you talk to your real estate professional and you discuss what the comps in the area are. So you do have a general idea of what the actual value is when you're placing your bid and into entering into the negotiations with the person selling the property. And I know that Greg Brown has it on his website. You can go to any piece of property in this county, and it does give you an approximate value, uh, just value, on the website. So going into the negotiations, you should know about what the property is worth. And you had mentioned that you know you de it's just what you decide it's worth, but it's not. There is actual values that you can look and comps you can Go to uh, Greg Brown's website, it's very informative. He now has comps on there, and you can look at it there. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. After the conversations that we've had today, I, and I wanna make sure I'm clear on this, I'm hearing that we don't wanna buy more property to build on property we already own. I would just like clarification because we don't already own Cotton Byron's property, we don't already own Mr. Clary's property, so uh, I'd be willing to consider what uh, Mr. Cooey said a while ago, but I would want to put a caveat on that, that the DeMara property would also be one that if he was willing to step up to the plate and give us the property, that it remain in the mix. But I, uh, uh, and I just want to clarify that, because if we're going to look at property we already own versus property that people are willing to donate to the county, then I don't think this should be penalized by not being an option. Thank Mr. you, Commissioner Clarence. Cole. Mm -hmm. 
Jericho is 64 to 9 Arnie's way. I don't think we're going to see 1.4 million to zero. I do, I do appreciate you wishing for that. There's a lot of other reasons why I don't like Highway 90. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, and, 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 I've, and I've tried to be just as fair and down the line as I can on this. Every conversation that we have, if you say Highway 90, Avalon, East Milton, or Milton, Highway 90 is the worst choice. That's the one people get the most upset about. I don't want it there. I don't want to buy a property. We think it's a problem. Over and over and over, I'm telling you, I, I, you know, you guys know how much I move around. All right? That is over and over and over. Highway 90 is the worst choice of anything that's out there. And, and, I, and I want to say again, I understand what you voted for in the past. But I think you need to reconsider and take Highway 90 location out, out of the agenda and focus on the Milton site, East Milton site. And, and if, um, if uh, Cotton Byram, and, and I'm quite certain that that offer is still there for Cotton Byram, uh, I will tell you this from, from a personal standpoint, and it's mainly because of what happened to us on the Pullum purchase. Mr. Clary has been a partner with Mr. Pullum for many years. For that reason alone, I have no interest in having any dealings with Mr. Clary. That's just my humble opinion in it, whether it's free or not. I, I just, it was too many entanglements there. We have property in East Milton. Certainly, several folks have brought forward leaving it in the city of Milton today, which I think needs to be considered. But I'm, I'm again, absolutely opposed, and, and it is my belief that, that Two of you need to get together and make a motion today, and let's end this discussion on Highway 90. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'd like to make a couple of comments of my own. I was uh, really caught off guard when I saw uh, that the name that we've been discussing changed. I was very disappointed when I heard one of my colleagues this morning admit that he's had personal conversations with this person outside this boardroom. That's very upsetting to me. Uh, it may be legal, but it doesn't uh, pass the rule that I was raised with, which is that you avoid even the appearance of an impropriety. Uh, all along, uh, you know, I, I just, it, I don't like surprises. It's not the first time you guys have heard me say that. I don't like surprises, and I really don't like this surprise. And, and uh, I'm going to withdraw. Uh, of course, I voted against it to start with, but this just doubled down my opposition to this piece of property. I, I, I cannot, will not support it. Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, since those uh, remarks were pointed straight at me, I clarified it with the county attorney prior to meeting with this gentleman. Uh, my simple comment to him was that simply that if you don't give us this piece of property uh, as a gift as has been offered by other people cotton buyer mainly on this piece of property i do not and i agree i do not see our sales tax passing that were my exact copies to uh, conference uh, entire conference to him and uh, again i did clarify that with a county attorney i'm not trying to do anything behind the back of anybody on this board or this county I'm just trying to simply get us a judicial center built as I've tried to do for the last eight, nine years. So, Thank you for those comments, uh, Commissioner Cole. Am I the only guy on this board that was surprised by this? Did everybody else know about uh, Milton Crossings LLC but me? I mean, when did you become aware of it? I only became aware of it uh, when I started trying to talk to the uh, representative from the bank, Mike McGrugan, I believe. Uh, and that was probably about two weeks ago when I here, here had again, Mike, Mike here, passed that on. Here, to here me. again, I, I, I yeah. highly object to one individual member of this board trying to negotiate a business deal on behalf of the board. It's highly not, inappropriate. It's not on behalf of the board. Highly, highly inappropriate. It's not on behalf of the board. It's, it's simply for somebody. I, I made a comment to a gentleman and told him that if you don't donate this property to the county, I don't believe our sales tax is going to pass. And that's truly how I feel. So. 
Mr. Cooey. Jerry Cooey, 649 Arnie's Way. I, I believe I hear one commissioner has withdrawn his support for the Highway 90. So let, let's. No, let's, sir. No, sir. Huh? No, sir. I have not withdrawn my support for Highway 90. I've never supported Highway 90. I, I understand. As, as far as it, it, it being on a consideration. So you got one that's, that's against it. Is, is there another one up here that wants to take that step today? And let's we'll, end this discussion. No, sir. Now, we'll conduct, the, we'll conduct the vote ourselves. But I appreciate the sentiment. Okay. But, but you're a little bit out of bounds on that one. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. A few minutes ago, we talked about asking staff to, look, uh, to revisit the Cotton Byron property, property and possibly the Clary property, bring it back in two weeks. So that's going to be my recommendation. Let's, let's let them do, it, do their job, bring it back in two weeks, and hopefully we can make a decision. Would you restate that, please, and make it in the form of a motion? Just move to Thursday's agenda to direct staff to continue to evaluate potential sites in East Milton, including the Cotton Byron property and the Clary proposal, and then bring it back to us in two weeks with their findings. And I, if you would entertain an amendment to that motion, just so that we, we tighten it down, that, and that include uh, examining whether or not we could move the gun range, as we've discussed, and uh, labeling the utilities. Uh, Would you accept that as a well, here again, just continue to evaluate these Milton sites. Now, here okay. again, I'm not I'm not supporting eliminating the Highway 90 site. I'm just saying continue right. to look at those East Milton. Sites. Mr. Mr. Make Chairman, that form, Mr. Yes, Chairman, Commissioner, I, I think we've already we've already moved that. We've right. already well, approved that. Right. That, that doesn't answer the question at hand, which is approval of the again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. The contract well, on on the Highway 90 property. Okay. Now, two weeks ago. We decided to give the people a choice, and everybody was happy. Now they want to take that choice away. I've spoken with a lot of citizens, especially in the south end of the county, who are more in favor of a Highway 90 location than an East Milton location. What is wrong with putting that question out there and letting the people decide? I, I, don't, I, I don't grasp that. If, I'll, uh, I'll... You know, we're, we're, we're giving the people a choice. Let them decide. You want it in in the Pea Ridge area, or do you want it in East Milton? Well, my problem is, is, is I vocalized this morning, I'll repeat myself again. I don't like surprises. I don't like the fact that one of the members of this board has been in private negotiations with the bank and then with this subsequent buyer that, that appears to have imposed himself between the discussions of the bank and ourselves, and it really, uh, I feel very adamant about it. Uh, you guys can outvote me, but I absolutely do not support it. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Cole. Our job as community leaders, not sit on the porch where they're waiting for something to happen. I clarified it with the county attorney that I could make that phone call. I have worked in the best interest and have in the last 12 years of Santa Rosa County. I'll continue to do so. I'm sorry I didn't get your authority to do that before I did so. Unfortunately, there's sunshine law. We can't discuss things until we're sitting at this dais. As we but should not do. But if I can do, do something, we should excuse not me, sir, I, I, you give me the podium. I did, chair? and you, and I, I, I'm I apologize, not making I apologize, comment. it's your floor. Thank you, sir. I, do, I worked at the best interest of Santa Rosa County. It wasn't a secret meeting. It wasn't a behind closed doors meeting. The man simply drove to my automotive shop I asked him what he thought about donating that property. I expressed to him that the citizens of Santa Rosa County have acknowledged that they will not support a sales tax unless we do not buy property. I said, if you want to see this pro project built, you need to recognize the value of a 25 to $35 million investment that the citizens of Santa Rosa County would make that would affect, strongly affect, the balance of your piece of property. And if you can't feel like in your heart that now that you've made a purchase of this property and now that it's out of the hands of this bank, that you can donate that property as other citizens in Santa Rosa County have offered to do, then I don't think it's gonna fly. And that was my comments, and I'm sorry you see it as inappropriate, but I work for the citizens of Santa Rosa County. I seen it as appropriate to ask them to do that. Well, I appreciate your comments, uh, and we are supposed to be uh, leaders in the community, and we are supposed to be uh, forward-looking, and we're supposed to be looking forward for the next generation and not for the next 12 months. Uh, it, 
just how long you, you, you said you had that conversation two weeks ago, so you've known about uh, uh, Milton Crossings LLC for two weeks. Uh, I've heard nothing about it. I, am I the only one on the board that has caught flat-footed by this? Mr. Chairman, I, I wasn't aware of it either. However, to kind of move us forward, I agree with Commissioner Lynchard that I, I have a lot of people tell me they like the P Ridge site, people in the south end, people in the Pace area. So here again, uh, one of the last decisions we made was put it on the ballot, let the people choose, and I think that's what we should do. That's a fair way to do it. Yes, sir. And so, I want to see the uh, I want to see the appraisal on it. I know I'm I'm my thinking is backwards to, to the rest of the board on this, but I don't see what it's worth for. We make a 1.4 million dollar offer. It may be worth half a million dollars. I don't know what it's worth, and we don't know what it's worth until we look. But let's move the issue because we've got a whole agenda to deal with here. Gentlemen. And I'm going to take a break with or without you in a few minutes, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I support what Commissioner Lynch said. Commissioner Lynch, is, is that a motion to move it to Thursday's agenda? Without objection. Thank you. Okay. May so I ask a question, please? No, we're not through with this. Just stand by. All right. Uh, so the uh, motion was to move item number three to. Uh, Purchase the uh, for the real property purchase agreement with Milton Crossings LLC, approximately 22 acre parcel on US 90 for the proposed judicial facility. And you move that without objection, and I object. Let's have a vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. Mr. Chair, a question before we. Question. It's been called. Commissioner Cole. The, the question's been called. Go ahead, Commissioner well, thank Cole. You. Okay. Uh, if we move this today, and I'm just asking perhaps our attorney, since she has more experience in land documents and stuff, we move forward with this uh, agreement. I know you've written in there where we're not obligated if the tax, several things, several, several caveats that if it fails, we're not obligated. In fact, we would even get our deposit back. Is that correct? Okay. At that point, if we have the property appraised, as Mr. Melvin suggested, and I I think it's a good idea, you know, you have an appraisal done. We have the property appraised and the asking price is 1.4 and it appraises at 800, 600, whatever it appraises at. At that point, can we go back and say, well, sir, we got this contract, however, we're only willing to offer you appraised value of 800,000. Are we in any way obligated to the $10,000 or anything else in this contract to decline it at that point if they don't take our counter offer? No, sir. Okay. So at that you point. You may withdraw from the contract for any reason. Okay. Up until November the 21st. All right. So I would agree that if we initiate and pass this today, that, that you know, we do, and I think it's part of this contract, that we'll do our due diligence, which I would think would be part of that doing an appraisal. All right. That's clarified that for me. Thank you. The question is before the board, but you have a right to speak before we vote, but I'd ask you to keep your comments on point and, and brief, please, ma'am. Yvonne Harper, 7375 Olympia Street. I just had a couple of questions for clarification purposes only. Um, Mr. Cole, when you said you stated, when you spoke with uh, Mr. Clary, you had said to him that the only way we would look at the property as a county is if he donated it. Is that the succinct version? Right. Okay. Yeah. Was that offer extended to others involved, you know, others who have property as well, or was that just, I know that uh, there was another gentleman who had offered property. I just wasn't sure. I wouldn't see how in all good conscience that once we make this known today at this meeting that we're going to consider property that's willing to be offered at no charge, how in good conscience this board or the citizens would expect us not to uh, take an offer from another person. I, so I... I, it wasn't, I, my question didn't have to do with whether or not we took the offer. It was that within that conversation you had with him, you said that you told him you would only, we would only as a county take the property if he donated it to save money. Could that offer then be applied to the property on 90 where we ask them the same? Well, that's what I asked a while ago. That that's, was my suggestion a while ago that we, we could enter this and a county attorney could say, look, 
uh, Milton Holding LLC. We've got two other pieces of property on the board. We've got our own property on the board. Even after an appraisal of seeing that the property's worth this, we're not interested unless you're willing to donate. That, that's, I don't see where we've taken that option off the table either. Okay, we, we've- And then with a, regards we, to it being on the ballot, will the information for both properties, which whether it's in East Milton or 90, as far as the cost, um, building cost, uh, all, you know, land, the entire um, cost be on the ballot as well? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, we got a motion for the board and it Commission requires a, a vote. A yes, ma'am. A second. A second, Commissioner Richter's motion. We got a motion and a second <coughs> by uh, Commissioner Salter. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? Same sign. Great. The item moves forward to Thursday. Uh, let's take a 10-minute uh, break. Please be back in place at five minutes after 11.
Please find your seats. We'll wait just a moment for Commissioner Cole, I mean Commissioner uh, Lynchard. All right, administrative item number four is discussion of establishing solid waste franchise area or areas north of East River in Santa Rosa County, uh, Mr. Walker. And Mr. Chairman, again, this is the matter that we had discussed uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, we kind of going through the process. We've had the three public hearings uh, where, where we're looking at the establishment of of the areas. One of the things, in, in Commissioner Lynchard had mentioned to me, and he's not here, uh, would be the, the 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 possibility or the practicality of one having having. Uh, ju just bidding for one uh, uh, franchise in the northern part of the county. The benefit of that would be uh, the, the it would it would to, to cover the entire northern part of the county. It would it would you'd not you you'd not have to split the cost of going to the Alabama line between two two vendors. You'd have the opportunity of have a little little better cost. You also could probably grandfather. Uh, somehow the JNL uh, uh, concerns that had been raised, and that, those were really the only concerns when we went through the public hearing process or the, or the town hall meeting process. Was, were the uh, 300 and some odd customers, I guess, of JNL? Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Salter. One of the things that I've been hearing, obviously. We're talking about the central part of the county where we have good population, and then we're talking about the far rural parts of the county where you have very little population, and that's the way people want it, and that's why they choose to live up there. Uh, for example, the Blackwater River State Forest. <clears throat> there are only probably maybe 50 people who live within the forest. Well, that's an awful lot of mileage for a hauler to have to cover and keep the fees as low as possible. Uh, one of the conversations I've had, legally, by the way, is look at that one hauler concept with some type of potential, and I'll defer to county attorney at some point in time, for that one hauler to have the ability to maybe subcontract uh, some of those far rural areas as long as they meet the guidelines and keep the price at reasonable. For example, there's a hauler out of Baker uh, who covers the Blackwater River State Forest mostly now, and, and they make that work. Mm -hmm. So I hate to see, see losing that option uh, and not being able to have a franchise area within the central, mostly northern part of the county. So that, that would be something I'd want us to look at too, is the ability to possibly subcontract certain rural, rural areas where you have something that's working now. That's, thank you, uh, Commissioner Alter, and, and that certainly work, and, and uh, my suggestion uh, runs a lot, uh, very much along those lines, and that would be to uh, do it by weight so that the little mom and pop operator, JNL, is not impacted with their 16,000 pound truck and uh, the kids that haul for the neighborhood, you know, that take uh, yard debris and stuff uh, working their way through school in the summer or whatever, those folks aren't in, impacted. The whole thrust of this is to take, to minimize the damage to our infrastructure by the multiple haulers in our subdivisions. So we, we ought to be able to accomplish that without damaging the small business aspect. Uh, yes, sir, name and address for the record. Thank you, Chairman. Rory Cassidy, 2910 North Palafox Street, Republic Services slash Allied Waste. I think the uh, second item that you all had discussed previously was also the cost savings like they realized in South Santa Rosa County. Now, obviously, South Santa Rosa County is almost all neighborhoods. And again, it's not mandatory, but you only have one provider in there. So you might want to look at the other options to protect the small haulers that do a fantastic job providing in the most rural areas. But the services that are available, the bulk collection, the yard waste collection, recycling, 
It is something that it is becoming more and more popular. I know the contracts they entered in almost three years ago were coming up for renewal in the fourth quarter of this year. I will tell you to look at your best rate, and if you recall, I had just come to work for Republic Services when y'all contracted with Waste Pro and Waste Management, but the Republic Services rate was substantially lower than both of those. We did not have an office in Santa Rosa County, but we operate uh, probably the longest of any in Santa Rosa County. So as you're looking at the options for the North and Central, you might want to consider the South Santa Rosa franchised areas also. Again, Gulf Breeze just went out for proposals and the rates were eight, almost 8% 8 lower than what we were charging last year. Due to our level of service, we retained the city of Gulf Breeze, but I think if y'all talk to uh, Mr. Eddie over there, he'll tell you we try to do a phenomenal job for the citizens of Santa Rosa County. But there are several options out there. I would leave, when you issue the RFP, leave the options open. You know, density, as, as the business person, density is where the savings is. You know, the services that are provided, maybe have the provider make those available in an open market, but have those services available, being the bulk collection and the yard waste. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I apologize for being a little tardy returning. So I missed the first part of the discussion. One thing I had uh, brought up to Mr. Walker uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, was <clears throat> a single franchised area for the north end of the county. I think, uh, again, given the uh, population density up here, the fact that, that we're a lot more spread out in the north end of the county than in the south end, um, it may make more sense to have one hauler serving the entire north end of the county. One reason we bifurcated the south end of the county was so that we would have uh, two haulers. In case something happened to one hauler, we weren't happy with the hauler, we could uh, uh, transfer that service to the, uh, the other provider. Well, that won't be an issue. We already have two haulers operating in the south end. If we add one hauler to the north end, and it could be one of the existing or it could be another provider, then we will still at a minimum have two haulers operating in the county. So if, if there's a hiccup uh, with one hauler, then there'll, there'll be uh, somebody to step in and fill that void. But by, again, because of the, the, the low population density in a lot of areas up here, if we had one hauler servicing the entire north end of the county, um, that, that would probably lead to lower rates. Uh, just a, a thought. That wasn't on our, our list when we're looking at how to split the, the county up. That, that makes sense to me. Uh, Commissioner Cole, do you have any comments you'd like to add? Uh, since I'm not in that business and I don't think any of us are, can I get Mr. Cassidy can back up again? Uh, I, and I'm, I know that it's all in quantity. And, and how many people you're servicing at one time. Uh, I believe it was, it was a Commissioner Salter that suggested possibly subcontracting with some smaller companies. Uh, I just like to hear your input because it does get very rural or it does get to where you're having to, you know, cover a lot of cover a lot of ground. Do you see that as as a representative of a company that does this as as being a a feasible idea. Well, Commissioner, we do. We offer homeowners associations a lot lower rate than somebody that's in a rural area. And we do have some homeowners associations that by their bylaws, they can't dictate that they have to use Republic services. But we service the majority of the houses in those subdivisions. And so they get a lower rate than somebody that lives up near Munson Highway would get. Um, you know, to get your best rate, and you know, I went to one public hearing that y'all were there, there were three people there, or four people there, and all of them spoke against having a franchise there because they wanted to use their current provider. You know, in an ideal situation, I would take a map and drop from Pace around Milton, East Milton, and say, here's your franchise area. Those people are gonna get the most attractive rate. If you go everything, you know, North County, the people in Pace and Milton are gonna to have to subsidize the people that are in the most rural areas just because of the truck time, which is measured, you know, per cost per hour to maintain. Um, so your dense areas are going to have a lower rate than if the whole county 
is included, the whole north and central county is included. But we would, we would respond either way. If it was, you know, one of the maps identified a dense area, uh, and we'll just call it the Pace Milton area, you know, what's the rate there and what's the rate for the entire county? And, and maybe in your request for proposals, have the options outlined, and then you can say, okay, well, these people are gonna pay, you know, $18 a month if it's just this area, and $22 a month if it's the entire area, and decide, okay, do these people, are you gonna have enough participation to justify a higher, higher rate? The people that live in the neighborhoods, they don't wanna burn in their backyard, they're going to use the services. It's the people, again, that are in the rural areas that, are, you know, don't need the necessary services that you know a city dweller would require. So, yeah, and I, so I like the idea of, of, of doing the entire North End, but I'm, I'm, well, I think I heard you say is that by if if you were to give the entire North End the same price per person, whether you're in a rural or in a, in a congested area, basically we'd have the people in a congested area or more denser populated areas subsidizing the other costs? Well, uh, subsidizing might not be the, the correct word for that. Uh, they would be the, paying the, the a higher rate. Out, they yeah. would be paying a higher rate because when you're using your business model, you're basing it on the number of homes per hour sure. that you can collect. So if you're collecting 100 homes an hour, like you are in, in South Santa Rosa yeah. County, the rate's gonna be a lot lower than if you're collecting 50 homes an hour because your, your truck costs are the same per hour. I'd really have to see that before I could agree with it because I, you know, part of part of what we did besides the you know less mileage in our neighborhoods is is we we actually were able to give our citizens a, a better rate and better service for than they, they were paying. So I, that'd be my concern, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> one one possibility, and again, all of this can be fleshed out when we put out the, the request for proposal, as, as Mr. Casty said. Um, if you look at option three, you know, it, it divides the north end of the county between, at, uh, is, that, is that four, highway four, where the dividing line is? I can't tell either. I, I believe it is, Commissioner. I believe you used highway four as the northern boundary. I think highway four was, was the, the northern boundary. We can try to determine whether or not that's really the appropriate line of demarcation for rural versus the, the, the more congested areas in, in Milton and Pace. We may want to move that south a bit, but we could still have one hauler service the entire north end of the county. They could just provide two rates. They could have a, a rate for you know, the, the 90 corridor, if you will, and then a rate for the more rural areas or, or you know, a surcharge, which may end up giving the, the rural customers a better price than they're paying now. Certainly a higher level of service. Higher services, you're right. And uh, now they would still pay more than our city dwellers down along the Highway 90 corridor, but they could still benefit in the long run, even though they're, they're in the more rural areas. Right. Okay, well, we'll uh, package this up and move it to Thursday. Uh, a lot of good things to consider. And as long as we take care of the mom and pop hauler and, and the college kid that's working in the neighborhood, uh, and just if I could, and I, I'm not the attorney, I'm the garbage man, but on, on subcontracting, Commissioner, it's, it's somewhat, and I know you have a lot of history with Gulf Power that uses subcontracting. I think you would be better off grandfathering them in and saying, give us the list of customers that you currently service. Republic Services is not going to service them unless they choose to go with. We would, the issue with subcontracting, we're drug free, we do background checks. The, we do subcontracting with our truck maintenance, uh, like body, painting, mm -hmm. uh, transport, and what have you. But the subcontracting, I think, if you grandfather them, and there's some contracts yeah. out there in Florida that have grandfathered clauses in there, I, I think it's cleaner than if you're, we're trying to hire and pay them, is just my thoughts, personally. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Cole. Thank you. I, and I, we, we all, we're all getting a lot of emails from people, especially JNL customers and some other independents. And I'd like to see us at least clarify that today. And I, I agree that the grandfathering would be better if, uh, I, I think that'd be the best resolution. If you have the customers today, you keep the customers, you just notify our staff so that could be included in the RFP of 
of which ones are not available to, in that? All right. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think we, we may not have, have formally approved it at the last meeting, but, but certainly our intent was made clear that regardless yeah. of what we do, uh, there will be some provision made for JNL, who I believe is the only small independent hauler. There are two, okay, for any of our small independent haulers, there will be provision made to uh, grandfather them in. So they will be able to continue serving their customers. Now, if their customers decide right. they want to take advantage of the new program, they're free to do so. But we will not, uh, we're not going to put those small haulers no. out of business. Okay. So who, who would be the two? I mean, when, when we've got five haulers uh, that are that are licensed, are permitted in San Luis. There's County. one independent and four. I mean, there's five licensed according to the list the staff gave me. Right. J and L is the only independent, and the others are are uh, waste management, uh, waste program. And I may. I, I thought that Adam Sanitation had some customers in Santa Rosa County. They may. They, 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 they do. <clears throat> That's the company that serves some of the people out of Blackwater River Forest. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. so we just, They're out of Baker, like, right? We'll check. I mean, yeah. yeah they, I mean, Commissioner right. Melvin's right. He, he and I were going by the same numbers. There was only the one. Yeah. Well, my numbers came from the staff, so whatever, the, whatever we have right. a, a license on. All right. Well, let's move this to Thursday then, without objection, and uh, hearing none, it passes. Item number. Commissioner, for clarity, as you look at option number three, that's Highway 182 is the, the line of demarcation between the red and the blue, and that goes all the way to the state line. Okay. All right. And just to clarify, I think when we moved it to Thursday, we didn't specify um, a a map. No. So. <clears throat> Which you mean not to? I would be. I I think we need at least two options when we go out there. Okay. Um, so, option three would be one where we. And and actually, you can. Option three is Highway 4, I believe. Uh, option three is, is it's, it's 182, um, but you can, you can interpret option three in, in, in a couple of different ways. You can have one hauler serve that entire area with two different rates, or you can split it up and put it out for bid and let one hauler bid on the south area and let them put in a completely separate bid for the north area. Um, again, it's going to come down to dollars and cents for our, our <coughs> residents up in the north end of the county. And if somebody's just serving that, that rural area and not taking care of the, of the, the, the more populated, more, more densely populated area, rates are going to be out yep. of whack. So option three can be broken down into two ways. And then if, if the board wants to, to discuss or, or, or include option one or option two just for the sake of having more than one hauler, but I, Personally, I don't think we gain anything by option two, option one, or option two. Mr. Chairman, be Commissioner Salter. Three or Commissioner Salter. As we move forward with trying to create another map to accomplish what Commissioner Lynch is talking about, to look at it anyway, you got to be cognizant of that north-south line too that, that goes along that Okaloosa County line because if someone gets the franchise up in that area, even though an independent hauler is hauling, primarily for most of those customers, if it's in the franchise area, all it's gonna take is one customer uh, who lives on the backside of the forest to request service. And based on the franchise, now you've got to drive 25 miles to get one customer. So we just need to be aware of that as we try to look at this new map. I mean, the, the alternative there is to have an option where we, we carve out the yeah. rural area of the county and we don't have franchised hauling in that area. Well, those, those are some of the comments I've heard, and yeah. I just think we've got to be real careful when we create a new map. Careful, just make sure it's, it reflects what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I think that, you know, we all know what the goal is, and that's yeah. to get a better level of service and the best possible rates for our, our residents. It's a little more difficult dealing with the north end of the county than it was the south end just because mm -hmm. of the, the population density and, and how varied it is. Um, so option three, I would, I would 
say we move option three as it stands to uh, Thursday along with an option three that um, provides for one hauler serving the entire north end of the county. And we can ask them to provide us a rate tier rates for. And we might as well go ahead and include the uh, carve out now for JNL and I'll add that as an amendment if you're making a motion. Yeah. It's hard to carve them out because they're 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 well if we grant them an exception I, when I say carve oh. out that was the wrong word. Yeah, we just uh, you just mean the exclusion just, as far well, as grandfathering yeah. and right, the way grandfather was the was right. the right term. I used the wrong term. Right. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Commissioner Carver. As we go about addressing J and L, I'd like for county staff to also contact Adams and Baker and just see what yeah. The customer number looks like up in that rural part of the county. Okay, then uh, the, the uh, motion is that we move this item uh, to Thursday without objection. And it contains option three with uh, instructions to the staff to contact Adams for input and that we will grandfather JNL. Is that everything we need to include? I move that without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number five is discussion of three amendments to the human resource policies as recommended by human resource director. Uh, Mr. Walker. Mr. Chairman, in the packet is, is the um, email, uh, excuse me, is the memo from Mr. Cook outlining those uh, three particular um, policy changes and that he would recommend. The first would, would to allow uh, departments to fill with an intern or a student or a, or a current, currently uh, filling the position with a temporary status. You know, we, we, we use uh, temporary people in the past. This, this is a way to just help get them moved into the county workforce as, as, it, as it works out and it's, it's, it seems to be pretty cost effective. Uh, same thing is with the um, it recognizes the co-op students uh, as trainee appointments, uh, again, for the transition. And then you see the holiday, um, uh, comp the, the pay uh, situation for people on workers' compensation. I have a question uh, or concern, and maybe, maybe you can help allay it. But by doing this, would it not have the effect of, of just jumping the, the civil service role? Devan, you want to speak to that? I mean, I'm not. I mean, the way I see it, if, if uh, you get somebody in here on a temporary basis, and I've been sitting on a service, civil service role for a year trying to get a job with the county, and a kid comes in and gets a, a temporary job, and now you have the right to place him without consulting the civil service board or referring to the list, seems unfair to me. Um, in, in essence, um, you are, in some regard, changing that opportunity for a list. But what we're finding is that we're creating lists with hundreds of people on it when only one person, you know, the, the, the elected official or the department has already seen who can perform the job and is qualified. And, you know, this is not something we would do every day but we like that opportunity. A lot of jobs, we don't have anybody available. We just have a job opening. But there are those occasions when we have somebody that's already trained, already working in that position, and this would give the opportunity. Now, they still have to meet all the minimum qualifications, go through everything to take that job. It is, is there a possibility that somebody could abuse that as in all of our policies? Yes, they could. But we have not seen that. We feel comfortable in making the change and allowing the departments to be able to fill that without uh, the need to, to take applications and go through that process because what we're finding is they wind up selecting the person that's already trained that's eligible anyway. Anybody else have a question? Okay. Uh, I'll move this to uh, Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number six is discussion of uh, the use of Williams Lake Road for a 10K, uh, 
10K run benefit for the preservation of the historical Coon Hill Cemetery. I move approval of objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number seven is discussion of purchasing the Cisco Blade server system with the required operating software from Presidio Network Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $40,574.80 based on comparison shopping. Uh, backups in the in the back of the book I guess what what does this accomplish for us again uh, mr. Walker why are we yeah as noted as noted on the um, uh, memorandum from from miss Floyd is that uh, this would would uh, replace the current I think is is some number of servers that we currently have this also would provide us uh, redundancy uh, and, and it backs up our system. We have we, we, we have the same system at the emergency at the uh, administrative center and at the um, uh, uh, emergency management building. And and this this just kind of completes that okay. redundancy. Thank you, sir. Uh, any discussion from the commissioners? I move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number eight, uh, public hearing scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Thursday, March 27th, is none. Uh, we have an add-on by the county administrator, uh, Mr. Walker. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and this will just be the uh, acceptance of the uh, assignment from the Gulf Power for, actually, it's, I said the last phase. They had been waiting for the last phase to become complete, so we will actually uh, accept the lighting contracts for all, th all three of the phases of the, the US 98 lighting. Uh, and then we will ultimately get, uh, there will be an a master agreement with uh, FDOT to reimburse us for the number of fixtures. So it'll just be a pass through? No. Pretty much. I mean, okay. it, it, it has been, uh, no. you know, to this point, they've been very, very generous with that. Any comments from the board? Uh, I recommend we move this Thursday without objection. Uh, hearing none, it passes. What we, name specifically do we need to stick on this, Mr. Walker? It, it'll just be the assignment of the uh, acceptance of the uh, Gulf Power okay. uh, lighting service contract. And this is, I mean, we've done this any number of times for the last number of years. This is obviously just the largest uh, by far of any of these these contracts that we've ever received. Sure. Okay. If it's the project. Engineer's report, uh, Mr. Blaylock. Yes, we only have one item today, and we're recommending approval of the construction plans for Borke Cove subdivision. This is a 67-lot subdivision located in Working District 1 just off of Highway 90. Uh, you've seen it. You approved the preliminary plat last week. Comments from the board. I recommend uh, we move this Thursday without objection. Here and not passes. Public Services Committee, uh, Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is discussion of approval of the Home Substantial Rehabilitation Program, second mortgage subordination request for the property located at 4381 Pine Villa Circle and Pace. I move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, passes. Item two, discussion of approval of the HHRP second mortgage subordination request for the property located at 4149 Highland Boulevard in Pace. I move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item three, discussion of approval of the HHRP modification of existing mortgage for the property located at 6985 Martin Road in Milton. And I move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item four, discussion of authorizing the chairman to sign the enclosed resolutions and related documents to apply for transportation alternative program grant applications for projects within Santa Rosa County. I move this to Thursday without objection. Your note passes. And that concludes public services. Thank you, Commissioner Lynchard. Uh, we have nothing on the uh, Public Works Committee, which brings us to the Budget and Finance Committee. Commissioner Cole, please, sir. Thank you. Item number one is discussion of bids received for one steel deck truss, steel deck truck scale for the landfill. Low bidder meeting specifications is Michelli scales with a bid of $41,014, which includes a two inch remote detector. I do so without objection. Uh, here, none that passes to Thursday. 
Item number two, discussion of proposals received for the South Tower and building grounding system. Below pro proposal, meeting specification was submitted by Pinnacle Wireless in the amount of $23,686.14. Move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item three is discussion of Budget Amendment 2014-100 in the amount of $20,000 to be carried forward funds from the three tree mitigation revenues in the general fund to be used for the purpose of purchasing, planning, and maintaining trees on public property. I move that to Thursday without objection. Here, not passes. Item four, discussion of Budget Amendment 2014-010 in the amount of $6,604 to transfer funds from the capital fund to the general fund to purchase an ATV for Navarre Beach. Move out without objection to Thursday. Here none, it passes. Item five, discussion of budget amendment 2014-102 in the amount of $303,540 to recognize Tourist Development Council commitments for construction of Baghdad Mill site, including 162,000 from North End TDC reserves and $141,540 from General TDC reserves and authorize the expenditures in the District 2 project funds. If so, move that to Thursday without objection. Here, not passes. Item six, discussion of Budget Amendment 2014-103 in the amount of $66,920 to recognize the 2012-2013 Recreational Trials Program grant and match from the TDC North End Committee Reserves and authorizes for expenditure of trail construction and purchase of trail side facilities for the, within the Baghdad Mill Site Park in the District 2 Project Fund. Do so without objection to Thursday. Here, not passes. Item seven is discussion of budget amendment 2014-104 in the amount of $5,600 to recognize donations from the Baghdad Waterfront Partnership Incorporated and the Blackwater Pirates Organization and authorized for expenditure for improvements to the Baghdad Mill Site Park in District 2 project funds. Move that to Thursday without objection. Here, none, it passes. And item eight, discussion of county expenditures and check register, which I'll have prepared for Thursday, and I do so without objection. Move that to Thursday without objection. Here, that passes. Uh, this report. Thank you, Commissioner Cole. Uh, public forum, anybody have anything to bring before the board? Name and address for the record, please, sir. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Robert Coley, 8271 Gulf Boulevard, Navarre, Florida. Uh, as all of you know, uh, the <clears throat> 13 years of litigation between the uh, uh, leaseholders on the beach and uh, property appraiser Brown uh, is concluded. The uh, Supreme Court has spoken. Um, we accept that. That's not happy about it, but that's that's the way it is, and we certainly said time to move on. <clears throat> um, uh, in previous meetings uh, several years ago, and I don't remember who the commissioners were that were made the statements, but they were mentioning that uh, if the county won the lawsuit and beach people were required to pay taxes, that the um, lease fees should go away mm -hmm. because it's not this whole thing that was based on the uh, Greg Brown's fairness his, his suit was based on fairness and it's only fair I think that now that uh, we are uh, obligated to pay taxes that we shouldn't have to pay lease fees also uh, I made the uh I made the commitment as I was running for this office uh, in 2010 that I thought that would be an equitable way, and I haven't changed my mind. So I will I will bring that before this board, uh, if to the extent that it's legal and allowable. Uh, if it's something this board can accomplish, then uh, I, will, I intend to introduce that as a, as something we take up in the next set of meetings. We appreciate that, Commissioner Mellon. 
Um, the other thing is there's going to be about 3.6 million, I think, in uh, interest fees on people who have not paid their taxes over the last 12 years. I think a big chunk of that is probably going to be the Holiday Inn property, maybe some other undeveloped property. But that 3.6 million, uh, it would be great if we could use that for beach restoration. This money that's coming from the beach. Um, we're looking for funds to do the beach restoration. That certainly be a good source uh, to provide a, a good chunk of that money. So uh, I'm the only one up here today from the beach, but I'm sure that by Thursday or next week or the next meeting, there'll be other people up here speaking about this. I'm not speaking and representing the leaseholders because my wife is president of the leaseholders. I'm not. <laughs> I'm here speaking as a private citizen of Navarre Beach. Appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. Anything else to come before the board? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Salter. I'm glad he said that because earlier a gentleman said that we're going to have 10 million yeah. new dollars coming into the coffer, and that's not correct because no. that's the total amount with a with larger share going to the school board. So I appreciate you saying yeah, that. I, I think the number for the interest is something around $3.6 million. And those are issues for the attorney to guide us through. I'm not sure what we can and can't waive, what we can do with penalties and interest. That's going to be a difficult question. Yes, sir, please uh, name and address. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, and I, I know that uh, you are ready to get rolling. Don Richards, 1129 Park Lane, Gulf Breeze. Uh, two items uh, to bring forth. One is uh, about a month or so ago, Commissioner Lynchard introduced a resolution to help uh, United Peninsula Association fund the maintenance of the median. Mm -hmm. Just wanted you to know that I have received uh, communications from the IRS that they have changed, had a change of heart and that we will be receiving a 501C designation within 30 days. So that is a huge uh, accomplishment for United Peninsula. Uh, we'll know then whether it's a C3 or C4. They were evaluating both of them, but they said okay. that we would hear from us within 30 days. Uh, the second item that I wanted to bring up was uh, in terms of funding. We have also received a donation, the first committed donation of $1,500 from United, uh, excuse me, to United Peninsula from Pinair Federal Credit Union and we will be receiving that before months in. So that's really got things going uh, in the right direction. Thank you very much for your comments and congratulations on making it through the IRS maze. <laughs> Three years. Yeah. Well, anything else to come before the board? We are adjourned.